Hello. Hey, everyone. Hello, hello. So we are live today. And we are talking about Walmart doubling their prices. So we have had several comments. I had a viewer email me and she said, oops, just a second here. Um, I had a viewer email me the other day and I was uh, like, I had not heard about this. And she said, just heard from someone who went to a corporate Walmart meeting that they are going to be doubling all food price items. No surprise, but wanted to share. Okay, so she didn't say who that someone was or anything, but we did a live show that night, I think. And several people had asked me the same question. So you're like, what? So I'm like, okay, I have not heard this. What is going on? And so um, I said that I would do a show on it. So this is that show. Several people have said it. Now, first of all, guys, let me just say real quick here, 35% off Dining on a Dime cookbooks, all of them, volume one, volume two, and our gluten-free, dairy-free right here, 35% off our Labor Day sale right now right now right now and thank you from the samsons for our foot wrists we greatly appreciate those so thank you very much we got those yes thank you <laughs> oh and the bible money thank you that was very nice of you uh we really appreciate it all right so what do i think of the walmart prices going up well i had not <clears throat> seen or heard anything about this. And then I started doing a little bit of questions and um, trying to figure out what's going on or if anything is going on. I don't know if it is. Well, I mean, we all know something's going on. You go to Walmart, the French bread that used to be a dollar is now a dollar 49. Um, milk used to be 297 at my store. And now it's goes anywhere from 347 to 447 depending on the week. Um, regular bread went from 88 cents to a dollar. Flour went from a dollar 59 to two, I think 239, I can't remember. And so yes, prices are going up. But are they going to be doubling? Well, I don't know. <laughs> That's the end of the show. Um, here's the thing. I, I found another YouTube video from someone talking about it and they didn't really say anything. Just the same thing that my viewer said that someone at corporate headquarters said that they were going to be doubling their food. So what are you supposed to be doing about it? Well, first of all, that's why we write our dining on a dime cookbooks, guys. This is probably the what? Sixth recession. We've probably been through, I probably. don't know, probably six, three session we've been through. And every single time, it's the same thing. That's why we wrote our cookbooks, because you do not have to live on beans and rice during these times. Now, one thing that I am really going to start harping on, and you're going to start hearing me say this over and over and over again, and it's going to be in all three shows this week. You've got to keep things in perspective. Okay. Now, <laughs> right, dear. <laughs> yeah. All right. If you guys have comments, please post them in uh, the box. Put question if you can so Mike can pull them easier. Uh, and then he will either read them to me or email them to me if he's having an issue and can't read them. Um, You've got to keep this in perspective, first of all. Nobody likes to hear us say this, but we say this all the time. America, it doesn't matter how much inflation we've had. America still has the least expensive food in the world. I do not know of another country that has food that is cheaper than ours. The amount that Americans 
spend on food percentage wide wise versus their income is extremely low. And that includes takeout. You know, Americans complain that the foods have gone up at the grocery store and they can't cook at home, so they have to eat out. That's the most absurd thing I have ever heard. But we hear it time after time after time after time. I mean, seriously, all the time we hear people saying, well, I just can't afford to cook at home, so I'm going to go out to eat. So why is that absurd? Do you really want to get me started? <laughs> why is that absurd? Because I don't care who you are, pretty much with the exception of maybe Alaska, even Hawaii, I've looked at prices, but Alaska, I have seen where their prices are astronomical in Alaska. But even Hawaii, you can buy things on sale and you could easily feed your family for $50 or less a week. You really could. I did it for $100 and that included luxury items like baking cookies, granola bars, extra fruits and vegetables that I actually got about 10 days worth of food for $100. Not just, um, Kimmy! Yeah, Kimmy says, pull that up again real quick. Oh, here it is. Eating out is crazy. I can't believe how much it costs to run and grab a burger for the four of us. Cheaper to run to Costco and buy a package of burger patties. Yeah. I mean, I keep well, a package of burger patties in our freezer all the time. Well, and what I was getting at is you kind of have to use a little common sense and just think about what you've heard. Don't just believe what you've heard. Because like in this case, if it's too expensive to buy it at the grocery store, the people at the restaurant have to buy it. And then it Lock has to it be up. transported to them. And then they have to spend their time cooking it and paying their employees and paying for their place. And so it's, it's no way that it's going to be cheaper eating out. Yeah. It's just not possible, yeah. really. And this, I mean, that is, that is um, something that our viewers don't normally do. So if you're a normal viewer, yes, I understand that you usually don't do that. But I'm just pointing out that we hear a lot of people say dumb things like that. Now, even if your grocery prices doubled, um, it's still really not going to be that expensive. I hate to say it, but it's not. Um, It's going to be thrown at me, isn't it? I don't know what you're going to say. So really, please just keep this in perspective and realize that America still has the cheapest, still has the most plentiful food in the world at the moment. Now, I'm not saying in six months or a year, it could get really bad where it costs $5 for a loaf of Walmart bread that was 80 cents three months ago, four months ago. OK, that very well could be it very well could be. But you're just going to have to realize that you're not going to be able to buy all the stuff that you're normally buying or that you want to buy. You're going to have to make homemade cream of mushroom soup with no mushrooms. <laughs> I mean, you'll have to get canned mushrooms and do it with dried milk and make a gravy like they used to in the old days. You're not going to be able to make cream of mushroom soup. Maybe you'll have to make cream of chicken soup or you use chicken stock and make a gravy out of that instead for your um, uh, casseroles and stuff. Yes. I, I just see uh, Sweet Texas Tea says you're talking about having food available. What's going to happen when there isn't any food available? So <laughs> what I would say when Tara says keep it in perspective, I used to work for television stations for 20 years. And people always want to know what's going to happen. People want to know the future and tell the future. But what we've been discovering here is people don't really necessarily know why they want to know what the future is. So in this case, like where somebody said that the price was going to double, maybe it will, maybe it won't. We don't know. We know right now there's a lot of inflation. We, it appears that the inflation is more than the numbers that they're giving out, but 
to double in price, the inflation would have to be 100%. And I don't think it's there. No, it's And not think yet. about what if there's no food someday. You, you can what if yourself to death. Yeah. And you can really get into anxiety and, and terrible things. What we would recommend instead is to think maybe the price might go up a lot. Maybe it might double someday. Maybe there won't be food and just be prepared for that. Yeah. But to try to predict it yeah. is going to drive you crazy. And Crazy Cat Lady says, we stopped eating out quite a while ago. For my family, it costs around $100 to go out. Yet I spend around $165 for groceries for two weeks. Exactly. That is exactly it. Chicken was $2.27 this week, even with inflation. And you just stock up um, when you can. And yeah, so uh, Heather says, is cream of chicken soup in Dining on a Dime Volume 1? Yes, all of the cream soup, guys, 35% off right now. Michael put the link in it for our Labor Day sale. But guys, this is why we wrote the cookbook. You can make your homemade taco seasoning. I saw someone buying, oh dear. Wait, what am I putting in? The link for the sale. So oh, I, I saw someone who was saving money on their grocery bill buying gravy packets that's that's not frugal they're touting that as frugal and cheap it's not and wait what is it they're touting as frugal and cheap gravy packets <laughs> i don't care if it's a dollar don't spend a dollar on gravy packets when you can make homemade gravy for literally five cents five cents why are you spending 95 more cents than you have to you are going to have to really clamp down and cut as much as you can if you are not going to be able to afford these prices. You're going to have to stop buying the gravy packets and you're going to have to make homemade gravy. You're going to have to stop buying taco seasoning for a dollar a packet and make homemade seasoning for two to five cents per serving on here. You're going to have to stop buying tortillas and start making homemade tortillas. You're going to have to, and the same video had muffin mix. Stop buying muffin mixes. Well, they're so easy to do and quick. That's the main thing is like when she says, make your own of these things, not only do they cost less, but really most of those things take just a couple minutes to make, right? Yeah, with a lot literally. Of with ingredients you already have. Yeah, literally one to two minutes is what the majority of these things take. And so you're going to have to stop buying these things and really cut down. Do you know I have never in my entire life bought a gravy packet or a taco seasoning pack? I have never, ever bought any of those little seasoning packet things. Why? Because I have all the recipes in here and it takes me less than a minute to make Italian seasoning, less than a minute to make taco seasoning. And I just make a big batch, put it in a shaker bottle, and then I just use it when I need it. Um, Joanna says, soda, I know, I know, is $7.80 for a 12-pack. Yeah, sorry, soda's going away, guys. You're not going to be drinking soda. But guess what? We're drinking soda this week. You want to know why? Two seventy-five, a twelve-pack. Labor Day, it's stock up. I'm gonna send Mike and uh, Dave, and we're gonna go get <coughs> eight more for a treat. Well, someone had asked if they were they were thinking about going and stocking up on soda. If you can, and you have if you have the money, the money, go ahead. But here's the thing: it's a treat for us. It's not something that we drink six times a day. It's not our staple way to quench our thirst. And so those are the kinds of things that seriously, you are going to be cutting it out and you're just not going to drink it. Um, now, uh, let's see. Karen says, hi kids. I'm trying to control my binge watching. My goodness. I can't help myself. I'm learning, getting motivated. Yay. While her tushy is on the couch, having a blast. Oh, thanks. Yay. Karen, if you have time to answer a few questions, I'd be thrilled. We have any more of your planners. Mike, show them the planner right there. So I forgot to look before we went on the show. Yeah, just one. 
and um, our undated daily planners right here. I forgot to look to see if we have any left. I know that we are super, super low. So I don't know if we have any undated planners left. You can go to the store and check on that. I am still trying to find a printer. There's one in Gillette that we might be able to use. So we're still trying that. Now, what about Berkey water filtration? Can you put the link for, the Ber for our DIY Berkey? Okay. If you have the ridiculous amount of money that a Berkey costs, that's fine. But <laughs> you can make your own for about 60 bucks at home. Super easy. I did it myself. Well, Mike had to help me get a screw off because it, it was too tight. But I thought about doing a video. We, we went on a walk this morning and the pond behind our house had slime all over it. Green slimy water. So yeah. I thought about doing a video showing how it filtrates, how it filters all of those things out of the water and then drink it. So you guys can see how it works and how good it works. Um, bottled water. Oh my word. That is the, I would say of all things at the grocery store, even above soda, at least with soda, you get some taste or something with it or some sugar. Bottled water is the number one waste of money at the grocery store. You are not going to be able to buy bottled water, period. I saw this week about water treatment plant. Where was it? Jackson, Mississippi or something. They're having a treatment plant problem. Guys, that wouldn't have been a problem for us. Do you know why? Because I have bottles of water sitting in my basement that I refill every six months and um, keep fresh. We have our water filter. We would have been set if we were in Jackson, Mississippi this week. It's those kinds of things that you're preparing for. Okay, everybody keeps, not everybody, but a lot of people ask, well, what exactly am I preparing for? Those kinds of things. The people in Jackson, Mississippi, how many of them weren't prepared and now they're scrambling for bottled water because they have no way to filter their own water or they refuse to boil the water. And so those are the kinds of things that you're preparing for. And what does that have to do with doubling prices at Walmart? Stop wasting money on bottled water and soda and use it to buy food, real food. I'm not talking the pop tarts. I'm not talking the gummy fruit things. I'm not talking the, what is it? The boys love the little fishy things, the uh, goldfish. goldfish. I'm not talking the pre-made peanut butter crackers. I'm not talking the pre-packaged uh, pre uh, uh, potato chips and all those things for lunches. The pre-cut up fruits and vegetables in the deli, which the cashier told me one time is the number one seller at the store. And the second seller is the pre-packaged chips. Seriously, it's those kinds of things you're going to have to cut out. And so, um, yeah. So anyway, uh, Jana says hamburger went up seven bucks. So you don't buy hamburger. You're not eating hamburger this week. You're eating the pork that's on sale for $1.99 a pound. Well, now, again, if you have a lot of money and you want to spend more, you can. But the idea is. Well, then what are they doing watching our show? The idea is if you want to save or be prepared or fight inflation, then doing these things will yeah. save you a lot of money. Yeah. yeah. These big rich, big, rich stores are just breaking us and we are just making them more rich and rich, thus in control of us, control of food and control of people. Oh, stop it. <sighs> My goodness. Take control of yourself and responsibility for your finances. If Walmart wants to double their prices, that's their prerogative. Sorry, it is. Gas has gone up. Lots of things have gone up. Minimum wage has gone up to $15 um, an hour in a lot of states. Well, if you voted that in, that's your own darn tootin' fault. I'm sorry. Stores, why should the stores take losses? Because prices are going up and minimum wage is going up. The object of owning a business is to make money. And you can say Walmart is greedy, corporate, whatever you want to call it. But let me tell you, I don't see you going out and investing billions of dollars in product 
and putting it out there and building stores, making sure it's all on the shelves. I don't see you doing that. So that's their prerogative to raise prices if they want to. Well, and people, a lot of people really want to hate the big companies and some big companies are doing slimy things. But the thing is, companies have to make money. And I'm not going to be an advocate for Walmart by any means, but Walmart is in the business to make money. And they part of their business model is to have a very narrow margin, which means their profit isn't very high for the amount of stuff they sell. So when the price of shipping stuff to their store goes up, or when people don't want to come to work because they've been bribed by the government for to stay home for that thing going around, <laughs> um, then they have to pay more for more employees. They have to pay more for shipping and those things cost their prices to go up. Like with us, last year we had no books for the whole half the year. And the cost of shipping them to us went up dramatically and the cost of paper went up dramatically and those are expenses businesses have. But what I would say on the doubling prices, I don't know if, did you want to, I won't be spoiling it if I say something wrong. Go ahead. <laughs> I was just going to say, we don't know if their price will double, but if their price doubles, it probably means everybody's price is doubling. Yeah. And the reason why is Walmart, If so when you hear prices are doubling, first of all, no offense to whoever it was that heard it from a corporate manager, but I've worked in a lot of corporate situations. A lot of times a manager might say something that's his opinion about something and it's not the actual company policy. And so you can't necessarily go by a friend of mine or a family member, a friend of mine heard it from somebody at work who's a manager because that there's a lot of error, a lot of room for error in there. So it's good to be prepared for that possibility, but keep an eye on that yourself. But Walmart is in business to stay in business. And if they double their prices and everybody else doesn't, Nobody's going to shop there anymore. So if the price goes up, it's because inflation gets even more out of control than it is right now. Yeah. So I would kind of, on those things, not immediately react to what people say and kind of, kind of remain calm and think, does this sound plausible to me? What do I think? And am I prepared if it really does happen? Am I right? Yes. Sorry. Kemi, I'm live. You cannot be making jokes like that. Um, <laughs> uh oh. <laughs> She said, need a printer? Oh, I yeah, I saw that. <laughs> um, okay, so go check out our, uh, there are several questions about our homemade uh, water filtration system. All the links are in that video. So just go check out that video. Or if you go to um, Living on a Dime, click on our video show resources, I think, or show something like that video, whatever, what's the title? I don't remember. For, For our Amazon uh page and it has it in our prepping Amazon page. Um, so uh, I'm going to share that link for the water filter again, because uh, somebody said, why do all the influencers use Berkey's? <laughs> Ours um, isn't an actual Berkey brand. I'll tell you why, because, because um, they get a kickback if you buy it from Amazon and some, I don't know if Berkey has a, um, has an affiliate program, but a lot of places have an affiliate program for like that. And it's fine. I have nothing against a Berkey system. It is beautiful. It's shiny. It's pretty. I have nothing against it. Where the problem comes in is if your house is not paid off and all your debt is not paid off and you are not just 100% got your finances in order, you shouldn't be spending $250, $300 on a filtration system until that other stuff is um, in order. Kenny says, I have a lot of health issues, so I was told not to drink city tap water. Would you recommend a distilled or reverse osmosis system trying to get rid of fluoride to anything cheap? Well, I don't know why you couldn't just use a Berkey for that because that, or I mean the DIY filter, because I think it takes everything, including fluoride. I could be wrong on that. I'm not positive. You'll have to Google that. But in a situation like that, if you have health issues, of course you may have to buy bottled water. That's not the type of situations that I'm talking about, but you are like 0.000000001% of the population that has an issue like that. Well, but also though, 
I suspect it's probably fine for you to use a water filter. Like we used to use Brita pitchers and other kinds of filters. You would want to ask your doctor because if it's like a life and death thing, then it might be good to make sure that you ask the doctor if that's okay. But for the most part, that filters out most things out yeah. of the water. Uh, Kimmy from She's in Her Apron, who we get to see in a couple of weeks, and I'm so excited. I got a message from a viewer after two years watching me decide to slowly grow her pantry. Thank goodness she did. Her husband was out of a job for seven months. Her stockpile kept meals on the table. Yes, you never know when these things are going to happen. Now, as far as Walmart prices going up, if you want to spend $5,000 and stock up now and get a 50% return on your money next year, if this actually happens, go ahead. I mean, that's what, two years worth of food? I, I'm okay with that if you have the money and the space and you want to do that. But most people don't have the money, the room, or the space to do that. And so, um, you know, you're going to have to make do with what you have. You're not going to be able to, um, you're not going to be able to uh, eat things that you necessarily want to eat. You may have to eat things that, you know, you're not used to or you don't want to. So, you know, that's uh, that's something that you're just going to have to get used to. And basically, it's a suck it up buttercup type of a moment. I'm sorry. But you guys, once again, we have to keep it in perspective. We still have the most food in the world. And the if our food even doubled, it would still be the cheapest food in the world. And so, you know, if you learn how to cook right here, 35% off. I know I'm pushing our cookbook, guys. But I let me tell you, every person who has used our cookbook, they email me back and say, guess what? I saved one lady just a couple of weeks ago, saved $200 her first trip to the grocery store. $200. Why? Well, because people, you're learning how to cook. Well, and most of us don't realize how much we're spending at the store. No. Especially like Tara said, $1 for a gravy packet. Wow, $1. People think that's nothing. But when you do $1 for a couple of gravy packets and $1 for a couple of other things, mm -hmm. and eventually it adds up to a lot. Yeah. And we know because we used to have absolutely no money. Yeah. We had to make serious concessions on we can't buy a refrigerator because we need to buy food <laughs> yeah and so those things are decisions most people don't have to make really in america even the poorest of us normally have something in the budget like sodas or cigarettes or um name brand food or things that are more convenient that we could make it ourselves that kind of thing and so there are, is room for most people in their budgets but the thing is with the stuff that we teach in dining on a dime cookbooks um, most people are spending enough where if you just put some of these things into practice then the amount that food is rising is not really going to be a rise for you yep okay the next thing is you may not be able to shop at walmart now i understand that some people don't have a choice like walmart is their only store but that is extremely rare in the United States. Thank you everyone who's loving my shirt. So I'm glad you guys like it. Thank you. <laughs> um, Elizabeth, I'm sorry we do not ship outside the US, but we do have the ebook available for you. Um, and uh, what was I saying? Oh yeah, you may have to shop at regular grocery stores with sales. So like when we were living on $6 an hour, and then we had two kids and we were living on $15 an hour. And Mike was driving 100 miles each way to work every day. Okay. So we might as well have been living on $6 an hour because it was all taken up in gas and then an extra apartment for him to rent when he was up there. So when we were doing that, I did not buy anything that wasn't on sale. I could only go to the grocery store once a month. We lived 70 miles away from the grocery store. Whatever was on sale that week, that's what we were eating for the next month. If hamburger was too expensive, I didn't buy hamburger. I never, 
I never bought boneless, skinless chicken breasts until just, oh my goodness, it hasn't been that long, really. Maybe 15 years ago, we started having enough money to start buying boneless, skinless chicken breasts. It was all drumsticks and thighs and quarters. And they were actually good. <laughs> and really good. Super easy to make. Our honey glazed chicken, our maple or honey baked chicken, maple glazed chicken in volume one was a staple. It gave great flavor, but was super inexpensive. And Those recipes are on livingonadime.com. And pretty much any kind of chicken. It was good with pretty much any yeah, kind of chicken. It yeah, it was. And so you're going to have to get to the point where maybe you're only going to be able to shop the sales at the stores. Well, and there were things that we just didn't buy because... Like we didn't buy shredded cheese because it was more expensive than the block. Well, because Cindy mentioned that avocados are $5.99 each at her store. Yeah, we don't buy avocados. We just said, I guess we can't buy avocados. Yeah. It was unfortunate. Yeah. But we just realized some things we just can't buy because they're way too expensive. Yeah. Susan says we paid off our mortgage thanks to everything you taught us what to do, her to do. Hey, you Susan. go, girl. Isn't it an awesome feeling? That is great. I'm so proud of you. I love stories like that. Kenny says, do you guys or anyone suggest getting things in bulk from Azure Standard or are they too pricey for things like wheat berries and big bags of things? They are way too pricey. You can go to Walmart, now not for wheat berries, but for just regular flour and all that. You can go to Walmart and get the same thing for literally half the price. I did an entire video on that. I would never order from a place like that if you're actually trying to save money, okay? It's a huge waste of, uh, it's a huge waste of money if you don't have everything paid off and all that. Okay, next, Mike just sent me the next load of questions here. And one other thing, you know, if you can afford to pay more for prices and you're in pretty good financial shape, go for it. But we're mostly talking about when people are saying, I can barely make it because prices are going up. I mean, it's unfortunate. We hate the fact that prices are going up. Who wants to pay more for stuff? And unfortunately, we can complain about it. We can vote to the degree that that's the issue or there's certain things we can do to affect the price that we pay but for the most part whatever price it is is what we have to pay so trying to figure out how to work within that yeah and be able to afford to eat yeah i mean it's not like most of us are going to starve to death because the prices are going up it's not something i i would don't want the prices to go up yeah but guys yeah. before we get on to the next tip which you're not going to appreciate but i'm going to tell you it anyway because i love you Give us a big thumbs up, please. Could you give us a thumbs up and share this video for everyone to watch? That helps us out a lot, and we appreciate it when you guys do that. The next one is, okay, I'm getting ready to duck. Are you ready? <laughs> you may have to stop eating so much food. Hey, I think that was at me, shot at me. Actually, that's a shot at you look probably 60% of the American population. Listen, Americans are fat. Hey, 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 I resemble that. I am too. I still got 40 more pounds to go. Americans are fat and Americans eat way too much food, period. Probably 60% of the population. I don't know how much the actual numbers are, but it's got to be 50 to 60% of the population is just fat and overweight. And you may have to just start getting to the point where you stop eating so much food. Get the weight off shrink your stomach, and then you won't have so many calories that you are having to worry about buying all the time. Um, I know, I know, I know. I just, I'm waiting for the fecal matter to hit the computer screen, but you know what? Someone's got to tell you the truth and I'm here to do it, whether you like it or not. And I'm not saying it's easy. I'm not saying it's fun, but you know what? You would do better now to start cutting back now, getting the weight off now, shrinking your stomach now, than in a year if food is double, triple, quadruple, who knows what it's going to be, the way things are going in the twilight zone that we're in at the moment. Um, <laughs> it'll be, be much easier for you to handle that, getting off the sodas, cutting back on the sodas, you don't need to drink a soda every day. You can drink a soda a week for a treat, but you don't need to drink a soda every day or several times a day. And 
And um, so, yeah, I mean, you know, and you may have to cut back on your meals. You may only be able to eat once or twice a day. You know, desperate times call for desperate measures. And I was reading uh, one of our viewers very kindly sent me her um, uh, depression cookbooks, and I've been reading them. And guys, we don't know what true hardship is. The only people who are left that know true hardship are 90 years old or older now. You know, mom's age, down, cleared out into babies. We, the, I mean, people like mom who actually had true financial problems, there are people like that out there, and I understand that. But they are very few and far between. And even the poorest of poor Americans are rich. And we don't really know what desperate hard times is. And so we're trying to help you get yourself set up for this, start getting yourself prepared for this, getting psychologically thinking about, okay, you know, what am I going to have to do with this? And we're going to do another video on Wednesday. Our, our live show is going to be, um, what was the title? How did we title it? Uh, oh, shoot. I don't think you understand the way this works. Oh, yeah. The title of Wednesday's show is going to be, I don't think you understand how this works. And people are going to be really surprised, I think, if the fecal matter actually hits the oscillation unit. <laughs> I think people are going to be in for a big surprise. And those of us who are like us, our homesteading friends, our friends like our uh, friend Kimmy, she's in her apron. Um, we are the ones that are trying to get the word out to you. Start doing this now. People don't want to hear that, but, you know, you're just going to have to start doing it. Um, yeah. Oh, there was something I was going to say about all that. Oh, yeah. Yeah. One thing to consider, too, is it's not like you're going to die. I mean, even in the Depression, people, even the Depression, people lived their lives and it was really, un, it was kind of grinding for them to not have anything. But I think we're so used to having things that just having fewer things seems like a major yeah. catastrophe. Yeah. And, and the thing is, you keep the things you have. <laughs> And just use them more and wait till later. Yep. Uh, JNBS mom said, I bought your Not Just Beans cookbook years ago. That was the first edition of Dining on a Dime cookbook. Wow. She said, we followed your suggestion to put back six months of income. So happy we did. Not long after hubby lost his job. That is why we preach this. I don't know how many job losses we have been through. <laughs> I don't know how many. I don't know, probably what, six, seven? I don't know. We've been through quite a few. But guys, this is why we preach this. 35% off right now, guys, our Dining on a Dime cookbooks, volume one, volume two, and then our gluten-free, dairy-free edition, also 35% off. And yes, all of the food is absolutely delicious in our gluten-free, dairy-free cookbook. Actually, when she was making that cookbook she kept saying here try this and see what yeah. you think and a lot of those recipes I actually i love the ones in a regular book but i thought some of them like the brownies i thought these are even better than the regular yeah. ones yeah i made sure that it was tested on my non uh my want my what my normal family members that don't have to ha change their diets i made sure that they were able to eat eat it and enjoy it and didn't even know the difference so yeah and she would say if it's, especially with the last couple of them, she said, if, if it's not a wow, then we're not putting it in there. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Um, let's see. Rebecca says, focus on the facts rather than rumors. Yes. Now, I don't completely discount rumors because a lot of times they do come true, but I don't put everything into the rumors and I fact check myself and I see, okay, is this rumor true or isn't this true? Like my fertilizer video yesterday. <laughs> oh, dear. I shouldn't have mentioned it. 
But let me tell you, all you compost only people who were hollering at me that I don't know anything about composting and I need to learn how to make compost tea and I need to learn how to use horse manure and I need to learn how to make a compost pile. The majority of you, I have been making compost piles for 40 years, close to 40 years now, seriously, like 38 years. I have been gardening a really long time. And whenever I move to a new house, a compost is the first thing I put in before I even put in my garden. What was the first thing we did over here? Compost. Build a compost pile. I know about composting, but let me tell you. It's not enough. <laughs> I also sat and watched my 87 year old grandmother Great grandmother. Sit there in tears. Because when she was eight years old, they literally had ran out of food in the winter. They ate their last flour and water biscuits and prepared to die. So don't sit there and tell me that compost is all you need because it's not true. Compost is a, an excellent, excellent soil amendment. It puts bacteria, microbes, all kinds of things in your soil that you need to grow plants. And I 100% endorse it. And I 100% use it myself in every single one of my gardens. But if you think that compost tea and compost alone is going to get you the most effective garden for your time and energy, especially especially in times of an emergency. You got another thing coming to you. If you want to have the most effective garden with the least amount of energy and work from you, guys, if the fecal matter hits the oscillation unit and things really go to pot, you are going to need to reserve your energy for the big stuff. And expending excess energy gardening when you don't need to is a complete waste of time. That's why I got four years worth of fertilizer the other day when I finally found it. I'm not joking when I say I have been looking since February for fertilizer, even though that thing that Russia is doing has absolutely no effect on our fertilizer supply, I knew in my mind there was going to be something happening and they were going to use that as an excuse. And I started looking and let me tell you, in Wyoming and Colorado, I looked at probably 10 different stores and I have not been able to find any all summer long. This is the first batch I have been able to find. So I stocked up because I'm not going to expend energy on a garden when I could do half the amount of work by throwing down a few pellets of fertilizer with my compost. Learn the facts. And I was think, trying to decide if I should do a whole nother video on this, but these compost people are just, these organic compost, they are just nasty. And they're just nasty and they're nothing but a bunch of trolls. If you choose to garden that way, more power to you. Hey, if you want to use the energy to do that, that's perfectly fine. I don't care. But I'm here to advise my viewers 
on the best way to do things, the cheapest way to do things, the easiest way to do things. So that when you have an emergency situation, you aren't wasting all of your energy doing things that you don't need to be doing. Okay. Well, and I think the issue with the people that you're talking about is if you, if you have a conviction that's your personal conviction about something like compost, to say that nobody else can use it because you've decided, like we, we knew somebody who was decided to be a vegan at some point and up to then everything was fine. And after becoming a vegan, then suddenly everybody else was beneath her. <laughs> and yeah. that's the kind of thing that compost, like Tara said, tar, compost is great, but at the same time, fertilizer it has made it possible to feed millions more people. Millions. Yeah. But nobody wants to hear that and nobody wants to believe that. Guys, why do you think they started using more efficient practices in farming? Because they were using so much energy that they didn't need to, to use. And so, um, you know, uh, and for those of you who commented it and were kind about it, I'm not talking to you guys at all. There were some people like Frank says, we have used leaves, sticks, branches, glass cooking, kitchen leftovers, all composted. Works great. Yes, it does. But it's not all that you need. You need compost with fertilizer together to get the most efficient, um, to get the most uh, efficient use out of your garden. Um, Okay, and so let me go back here. Sorry to get on that little ramp there. You could tell I just had issue with that. Um, um, Marie, Marie, and a few couple. I think there've been a couple people that say my posts aren't showing up here, but I'm seeing you posting saying my posts aren't showing up here. So we're seeing that. So if there's something else, I'm not sure what the issue is. Yeah. Um, okay. So several people said, "How do you know how much fertilizer do you use in the garden?" Read the back of the package. The back of the package tells you how much. Usually I just get 10, 10, 10 fertilizer. That's, um, that does the roots, the leaves, and the fruit. So you kind of have an all around it. Now, where would I use a different type of fertilizer? So like I found some rose fertilizer at a thrift store that was um, moving stores. So they had marked everything 90% down and they had some rose fertilizer. And I knew that rose fertilizer had more of um, the middle number, which is phosphorus, and that makes more flowers. So then I think, okay, what vegetables do I need more flowers on? I have no tomato flowers. I have no squash flowers. I have no pepper flowers. Rose food will work in my vegetable garden because I needed it to flower. So I switched over to the rose because I wanted to get some uh, flower sets on those vegetables because I was having no vegetables. So I, um, I used it there, but 10, 10, 10 is your basic fertilizer. I'm good with that. Mir you can do miracle grow. I just got the big bags like you saw in my video and I just sprinkle it on there a couple of times a season, three or four times, depending on what the bag says. And that continually, uh, fertilizes my garden through the season. Now, somebody said, how do, what's the difference between compost and fertilizer? Okay, fertilizer is little beads that is man-made out of natural ingredients. So like the nitrogen, phosphorus, and potash. Those are all mined ingredients and they put it together and it comes in little pellets and bags. Compost is broken down organic matter. You could have horse manure as compost, you can have chickens uh, poop as a compost, goat poop, whatever you want, rabbit poop as compost. You can add leaves and sticks and twigs and all your leftover garden green plants that you're pruning and cutting back. You put all of those in a pile and it breaks down and makes soil, which is compost. It breaks down. You add this compost to your soil and it enriches your soil. It is excellent for your soil. I use it in all my gardens. I recommend it 100%. But if you want an efficient garden, you will use compost and fertilizer together. 
Then someone said, Tara, how do you know all this about gardening? I actually went to school for horticulture. Believe it or not, the fact that I'm a cookbook author, 35% off right now for our Labor Day sale, commercial break, <laughs> is kind of ironic because I actually don't like cooking. <laughs> Believe it or not, I don't like cooking. But well, that I, should say something about these books. Like she wrote yeah, them for herself. That's that's why I wrote Dining on a Dime because I wanted to find recipes that I didn't have to think about that I knew every single time they would work, they would turn out and they were cheap. That's why I wrote Dining on a Dime cookbook. And so um, I actually went to garden for horticulture, for those of you wondering. So that's how I... Um, that's how I know about gardening, okay? Um, I'm not just spewing this from nowhere. <laughs> I actually know and have done this and have gardens for years. I know you have uh, other questions here, but there are a but, bunch of people talking about miracle Grow and asking okay. if it's okay, and some saying it's not. It's perfectly fine. There's absolutely nothing wrong with miracle Grow. Now, the only problem that you can have with fertilizer is you can over-fertilize but just follow the directions on the package and it's perfectly fine. You know, we were, mm, dear, I didn't want to get down this trail, but Mike and I, Mike went with me to a soap conference three, four years ago, what, four years ago? And there was, I can't remember, was it Stanford where he was the chemistry professor? I think so. I think he was the chemistry professor at Stanford. And he is, um, I'm not going to say his name, but those of you in the soap world will know who I'm talking about. <laughs> He's like the number one guy on the chemistry of soap. If you make soap. Wrote a really good book and all of this. He was there and we, we asked him, we said, you know, all right, tell us about organic gardening. Are chemicals that bad in the garden? Is this stuff really going to kill you? Because I think at the time, maybe I can't remember for sure, the whole Roundup thing was starting or Roundup's going to kill you and cause cancer, which is not true. Um, and I think it was around that time, which is why we were asking him and we kept having a lot of people. And he said, he looked at us. Now, this guy's about as organic hippie type you know, person as you can and get. He pointed that out before he told us. Yes. Yeah. He said, I'm the biggest hippie. And I, you know, he told us this. He said, the stress from worrying about the chemicals in your food is going to kill people a thousand times more than any chemicals ever thought about it. Make you more sick than any chemicals ever thought about it. And we said, can we please get, you, can we please videotape you saying that? And do you know what he said? Tell him, dear. He said no, because too many people would flame him basically over the whole thing. He said no, because he said people don't want to know the truth. Well, he was a little bit afraid for his job, I think. Yeah. And he said, I'm telling you right now. He said, I'm the most organic hippie person you could find. But the stress from people worrying about these chemicals in their food and on their food is making them more sick than any of those chemicals ever thought about it. Well, and a lot of the chemicals aren't, the thing about chemicals, when people say chemicals, it sounds like some horrible, terrible poison, but the majority of chemicals are not bad. No. Any, I mean, chemicals are basically any atoms that are bonded together. So water could be a chemical. So as far as the chemicals and fertilizers and things, a lot of people will say it's chemicals because they can't pronounce it, but water is dihydrogen monoxide. Dihydrogen monoxide, sorry, I got some in my ear. Um, that doesn't sound like something you wanna be drinking, does it? Dihydrogen monoxide, but the reality is it's water. And so a lot of times when you see a chemical name, that doesn't necessarily mean it's bad. Some of them are, but if you see the name or just hear chemicals, that doesn't necessarily mean it's a disaster. And this is where you have to keep things in perspective again, like this whole Walmart doubling their grocery prices. Okay, it may happen. I'm not saying it's not going to happen, but it's not happening right now. 
and you still have time to prepare and you still have time to stock up and you still have time to get your debt paid off so that you can afford these price hikes. So, you know, I'm not going to say it's not going to happen because it very well could. But then again, maybe it won't. You don't know. You have got to keep perspective and you've got to stop worrying about this stuff. Now, Amazing Grace says, Ranch says, Tara, my garden didn't do well this year. I've never had to use fertilizer. When do I put it on after we till everything up this fall or wait till the spring? Wait till the spring. Because if you put fertilizer now on now, it's just going to dissolve in the rain and snow over winter. You want it to, to dissolve so your plant, so the roots of your plants can take it up. But I will tell you, I have not talked to one person. I don't know where you're at, Amazing Grace, but I have not talked to one person in Wyoming that hasn't had an awful garden this year. This has been the worst garden I have ever had. And at first I was like, okay, what am I doing wrong? Well, then my neighbor who's had a garden, I don't know, probably 10 years. She's like, nope, I'm having the same problem. I don't know if it's the weather. I don't know if Jesus is getting ready to come back or what, but something's going on. And so there's something in the air and, and please don't tell me they're spraying stuff all over the air. It's not Did, did that. somebody say that? No, but I know I'm going to get it. And so... <laughs> Uh, yeah. Uh, does fertilizer ever expire? No, not really. I buy fertilizer at, at estate sales all the time and I never have had issues with it. Uh, Tina, I have your older cookbook, Dining on a Dine, that's spiral bound. Is this the same cookbook? Yes, but our new edition has 40 more recipes in there. And vol that's volume one, but volume two is completely new. It's, yep. it's totally different recipes. Yeah. And gluten free also. Yeah. Um, if you need gluten free. Lady Hawk, good for grandma. Still doesn't mean others may need fertilizer. Quit being pushy. It's my show. I'm going to no, be no, pushy no. if I want to. Oh, Pat, I apologize, Lady Hawk. I apologize. She's at uh, Pat. She's saying that. Yeah, yeah. guys. She's listen. saying don't criticize people that want yes, to use fertilizer. Yes, I apologize. <laughs> I'm sorry. Here's the thing if you don't have something nice to say, just shut your mouth. I personally don't care if you use fertilizer. I don't care if you don't use fertilizer. Do what you want. But you know, we've gotten to the point now where we think that our opinion actually matters. It doesn't. I got news for you. I do not go watch other YouTube channels and give my opinion on something that I differ with them. I don't know that I have ever done that. Why? Because it's their channel and they can do what they want. And I think people need to just take a laxative for either colon from their bond, from its bondage <laughs> and calm down. If Walmart decides to double their prices, okay, don't worry about it. Think about what can I do to fix this, okay? Amy says, what do you do when you live in a townhouse to grow pro produce and have limited deck space? I'm just beginning. We lived in an apartment. I had, oh my goodness, how big was our porch? Three by three, mm -hmm. maybe? It was like 10 or 12 square feet total. Yeah. I mean, it was probably, yeah, it was super tiny. Tinier than, I would say tinier than a kitchen table. I just packed it full with what I could do. I put everything in pots. I planted tomatoes. I put radishes around the bottom, spinach around the bottom of the tomatoes. <clears throat> those grew. I harvested those. Then my tomatoes took over. My peppers, the same thing. I rotated crops in my look up square foot gardening. It's the perfect way to garden. And you can show, it'll show how to, um, how to garden in a tiny small space i've been square foot gardening since mel came out with it however many what 35 years ago um and i absolutely love it so do what you can don't worry about what you can't do maybe you can only grow five tomato plants but that would be what something that you can do yes dear I just thought it was funny. One person said, take a laxative, people. And somebody else said, colonoscopy for everyone. <laughs> I'm telling you, I think the entire country needs a colonoscopy. 
<laughs> it's like, let's get some stuff cleared out. Clear our brains. <laughs> it's like, my goodness, people. Actually, Sharon says, I never leave negative comments on Facebook. I had political friends say stuff on mine. I just show them to the Facebook door. The funny thing about that is, People that make the comment, the negative comment, nobody really cares about the comments. And if you, if they see that they have 600 likes, they're excited about that. But I was telling some people, if you always give your opinion on Facebook and it's a negative opinion, those people probably hide you so they never see your comments. Yeah, we just ban people. We because, don't even see their comments. And that's one of the reasons why, you know, Facebook feeds people only what they want to see most of the time. And so that kind of makes people yeah. feel like, yeah. Uh, Dean says, or maybe this is for Jan. What happened to your tomatoes? So I don't know about for us. He said in California, this is a great year for tomatoes, which is not what the news is saying. But for here, us here in Wyoming, my, um, despite the amount of wind we have, my plants would not set flowers. I was not getting any flowers on my plants. Have you seen that? I've sent you four things of questions. Can okay. you read them? In no, I haven't yet. People are asking. Um, and so uh, that's for us. I couldn't get any flowers to set this year. I don't know what happened. So the beginning of July, I just started dumping uh, high phosphorus fertilizer on there. And now I finally have some flowers. I don't know if I'll even get tomatoes before it freezes here. Okay. Sorry. Back to the comments. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I'm done with my rant. Everyone. Okay, feel yeah, we're calming down. <laughs> we're calming down. Oh no, are the comments that bad? No. I okay. Just, I just uh, made you <laughs> <laughs> Hey, I'm not saying anything they haven't seen. All right, Cindy, this whole thing is a ticking time bomb. Sure, they can um, all raise prices. I can't even afford to go out for lunch anymore. Groceries are so costly, I have to totally change what I eat. Avocados are priced $5.99. Yeah, you just don't buy the avocados. You have to change what you eat. Um, Denise, I'm prepping what I eat, but I also have beans and rice. Yes, I. that's what exactly what we're doing. Lori says she makes our seasoned salt recipe from Dining on a Dime cookbook, and it is so good. Michael put the link in there, 35% off right now. She says she sprinkles it on everything better than store-bought. Yes, that is our number one seasoning in our house is the seasoned salt. As a matter of fact, I keep it in a big salt shaker on the stove because I use it in everything. Deviled eggs, every meat I cook. Um, she has salt, pepper, potatoes, and salt as yeah. three separate things. Potatoes, put, uh, you know, potatoes, mashed potatoes, all of it. I season, use my seasoned salt for everything. Uh, okay, I answered the what kind of fertilizer do you use? Uh, Nancy Miller. Every girl or guy should win the getting married should have volume one for a wedding or shower gift. After 55 years of marriage, I still buy 90% of our food only on sale. Yes, that is the way to go. Um, Kenny, anyone else feel like Walmart just brings your mood down or make you wander through the stores taking a lot more time than you expected? Oh my goodness. I actually get in a really bad mood when I go to Walmart. I do. As a matter of fact, I may have to start taking medication to go to Walmart. <laughs> You send me instead. <laughs> I'm like, the other day, I just about blew my stack. I was so sick of the stupid Walmart bureaucracy. And I was just sitting here thinking, it does not need to be this difficult. I actually hate Walmart, believe it or not. But in our town, we have Walmart and two grocery stores, and that's it. So I, that's well, all I have to shop to. Walmart seems better than the grocery stores here. Yeah. Yeah. So, um, Nancy, my mother's family was poor, and during the Depression, she said they were okay. They raised their own food and were better off than the neighbors who were used to more. Exactly. It's the people who are used to more and have, not, have never had to be through anything, be, go through anything bad. Who are really going to have the problems. Jan, can you leave unopened flower bags and sugar bags out or do you put them in food safe containers? Uh, well, I put them in plastic containers only because I don't want to have an actual, a, an accidental water leak or something like that. And so I put them in plastic containers for that. Um, as you guys know, I use cat litter buckets. And go check out the video before this one if you're interested on that. Katie says she eats smaller plates. It's crazy how big plates are. Yes. Stop eating so much food and you'll lose weight and save money. Um, let's see. Karen says she's been stocking up on vacuum pack, cafe, Bustello coffee, 
for when the fecal matter hits the oscillation unit, it's an in the international section and it's mucho cheapo. Well, there you go. Thank you for that tip. Everyone go check that I've out. I've seen that. I've just never bought it. I see Actually, it I have some time. down there when I when I went one time to do a, a stockpile haul. Shannon, I remember my grandma telling me how during the Depression she had two kids and used potatoes like no other. Potato water, potato soup, everything with potatoes. She always made the best uh, out of everything and didn't dwell on what she didn't have. Exactly. Uh, Rosavala, love your channel. Thank you. She cooked the chicken fried steak on page 222 right here. Dining oh, on a Dime, volume one. Mike's number one favorite my recipe. Most favorite one, yeah. Yep. 35% off right now for you just joining us. Stacy, I love all your books. You give me a lot of new ideas for cooking from scratch. You are welcome. Karen, yay, caught you live from Glasgow, Scotland. We'll probably need to go to bed soon. You are so cool for staying up that late to watch us. And we liked Glasgow that, when we were there. Oh, my goodness. I loved Scotland. <laughs> I could have stayed in Scotland for my whole trip. Kind of, yeah. Probably won't be doing that again, but... I did love Scotland. Well, I liked Ireland too, actually. I didn't like England as far as like London that much, but we were in um, uh, Massam, England, and that was really nice. I liked that too. So yes, I liked all of those outdoor country places. Sorry, I don't mean to interrupt, but a whole bunch of people are asking about <laughs> Should you avoid horse compost? Somebody says, please verify if using horse manure, does it have to be good and dry? Do you know what the scoop is okay. on horse? Okay, so here's the scoop on horse manure. I will never, ever use horse manure again. So our last garden in Colorado, we went and got some horse manure from a farmer. And I was all excited, put it all over the entire yard. And absolutely nothing grew for like almost five years. I mean, I had to fight and fight and fight and come to find out I am not positive, but I'm like 98% sure that Grazon, I think is how it's pronounced, was in that manure from the horse grazing in some fields. It is a chemical that they put to keep weeds down, I believe, and it is a pre-emergent, if I remember right, but I'm not positive on that. And it keeps your seeds from germinating in your garden. And so now I make my own compost. I will not be using any compost for free from a source that I have. I won't use it from anybody. I mean, maybe if I had my own heart horse eaten in my own yard, I might. But um, or chickens eat in my own yard or whatever, but I won't I won't do horse manure ever again. Now, if you want to use horse manure, it's perfectly fine. The best time to put it in the ground, if you're not going to put it where it's already pre composted is if you're going to put it raw, so to speak, put it in the garden in the fall and let it cook over the summer or winter and break down over the winter. And then next spring, it will be ready to go in your garden. Um, so that's how you use it. And then the grandma's here. Hello, Susie. Hi, Susie. Um, Shannon, what do you do if you can't get fertilizer? Well, then you're just going to have to rely on your compost and your compost tea. I mean, and get what you can. If all you can get is miracle Grow, then get miracle Grow. Um, if you, you know, go to estate sales, go to garage sales. A lot of times older people move into nursing homes and they sell everything and they have a ton of fertilizers, compost, that kind or compost, fertilizers and uh, stuff like grass seeds, stuff like that. I get a lot of that stuff at um, estate sales. Uh, is there anything that you should avoid putting in your garden? Salt. Yeah, although salt is really not that big of a deal because if you get salt in your soil, all you have to do is just water it really well and it will leach out. If you put too much fertilizer in your garden, that can cause a problem. But once again, you can water it thoroughly for quite a while, for several days, and that will help leach it out. Don't put any meat in your compost, breads, those kinds of things. They can go in there and they'll break down, except that they bring rodents. And so you really don't want rodents in your compost um, and coming around your house. Okay. Do I have another thing of the questions while you're... Which one did you just look at? Four. I you four. Oh, you did all four? Yep. 
Uh, let me see what else I have. Uh, Kenneth says, if people would simply listen to you, they could move a little farther from the oscillation unit. <laughs> uh, I only yeah. have a, a short yeah. number of questions, then we need to be looking through them again. Yeah. Uh, Becky, four out of five tomato plants died. I still have got one hanging on. Yeah, guys, this is it. You know, my great grandmother that thought she was going to starve. By the way, she obviously didn't because I'm here. <laughs> but her dad had to go on snowshoes 50 miles away in the dead of winter. He was gone three weeks trying to go get food for them. Finally found some flour and sugar and was able to come back. And he came back, I think it was the next evening. I don't remember if it was the next evening or two evenings. And uh, was able to come back. But you guys, you never know when harvests aren't going to be good. And so that's why you stock up on these things. Um, oh, I've got some good questions coming on. Okay. Mike's got some I good sent questions. You, I sent you some, but... Uh, it's, I don't know if it's S herb, it's L. Um, how do you how do you compost eggshells? I've heard people wash them. I don't want to bother with that. Oh, good grief! No, Darn, just, just throw it in the compost pile. As a matter of fact, I don't even compost anymore. You know what I got? You know what I do, guys? I take my skip kitchen scraps and I just bury them straight in the garden. I have a video on that. Let me go see if I can find it real quick. Um, while Mike's pulling questions, I don't even do. I mean, I have a big compost pile, but most of the stuff I just bury straight in the garden now and just let it rot in place. So like I'll put it around the edges of my garden or in the winter when, um, when uh, there's no plants in there. And it worked really, really well. Here you go. Easy one-step compost right here. Yours truly. I've been doing this for years. Um, and, oh, thanks, Shannon. I gave myself a haircut before the live show on Monday. <laughs> yeah, I was brave. Thank you. I'm glad you like it. Um, let's see. Did you at one time recommend cashing out a 401k to pay off your mortgage? Is that a good idea? I mean, personally, if it was me, I would probably do that. But I grew up in a home where we literally would, would have been homeless and destitute if mom would not have paid off her house when we got sick. So we would have been either homeless or destitute if we would not have had our house paid off. But if you have the means, I would leave your 401k and just get your house paid off. You, most people don't necessarily have to cash in that stuff. They just need to stop buying the new cars, buying the uh, the snowmobiles and the ATVs and eating out. If they would just cut all that stuff and start putting it on their mortgage, then um, they would um, be able to get that paid off. So I would just really focus on that. Monique, I just realized I know way too much about poop. You know, me too. That's what happens when you have four kids, three boys. Nancy, where do you hear about estate sales? Oh, uh, we look on, uh, we have a Facebook group for our city that has announcements like that. And then our local newspaper has an online garage sale thing. Um, there's lots of sites like that. And just look for signs on the side of the road. Just go out Friday, Saturday mornings, Thursday, some places. It just depends. Um, Oh, Heather and said look, one thing you wouldn't want to put in your garden is vinegar. Yeah, don't put vinegar in your garden unless you're trying to kill weeds on paths and that kind of stuff. Um, I do um, I do use vinegar to kill weeds. You can also use boiling water. You could use a blowtorch to kill the weeds if you want to do all that organically. Uh, what brings rodents, meats, breads in your compost? Yes. <laughs> They're very annoying. And, and then if you don't get rid, if you don't take care of them, depending on where you live, then snakes come. <laughs> yeah, which could be good, I guess. But we had a really cool snake. How to get rid rid of ants in my raised beds? I would just use a pesticide. That's what I would do. I mean, that's what I do. So, um, 
Jay Moore, my composted quail poo may have helped the new raised beds this year. Giant peppers and tomatoes. Well, there you go. There you go. Guys, I'm not anti-compost at all. I love my compost. Mom and I have been composting for years. I think it's the best thing ever. But fertilizer does help not do so much work. Uh, Mary says her garden did terrible this year. Yeah, I have not talked to one person in Wyoming or Colorado who has not had basically a garden failure this year. And now I don't even know if I'm going to get tomatoes. Now they're finally starting to set fruit and we could have a frost or freeze in a month or less. So I don't even know if I'm going to get tomatoes. In that case, what do you do if you have green tomatoes on the vine? You can either pick the green tomatoes, put them in a box and cover it with newspaper, one layer in a one layer in a box, cover it with newspaper and let them ripen. Or you can just pull the whole vine and just lay the whole vine out like in your garage or something on newspaper or whatever and let that let them finish ripening on the vine also if you want. If you're just joining us and you came about the Walmart prices, we're talking about now kind of what to do to make to keep your yes to keep your price, your grocery prices down. But earlier in the show, we talked a lot in more detail about that. So you can go back and watch the replay. And yep. on YouTube, I think you can watch the replay now. Yes. Thank you, Denise, I think. Um, yes, I have lost about 25 pounds. I need to get back on. I was eating more calories than I should have, so I plateaued, but I am getting back on it now. I'm gonna do it again. Remy today says a cool snake. Yeah, I was a big, oh, was it a bull snake? Yeah. Or, um, it, at first, I thought it was about the size of a rattlesnake, but it was a bull snake, and so yeah. that was fine. But here at this house, we have tons of garden kind yeah. of garden snakes, but like maybe two foot long ones, and yeah. they're all over the place. Yeah, bandana gram. I put my kitchen scraps through my food processor to get a jump on composting. Coffee grounds. You can also use coffee filters, peels, etc. My grandkids thought I was preparing for dinner and nearly barfed. Yes, the more your scraps are cut up the quicker they were compost. So that's just the rule of thumb um, for composting. The smaller, the smaller the pieces. So like if you're gonna be bagging your leaves, run them, run the lawnmower over them first and then rake them up and put them in there. Or what we do is we run the lawnmower and bag the leaves in the lawnmower bag and then put them in the compost pile is how we do it. Um, okay, Mike just sent me more questions. Actually, I've got more coming now. Uh, La Deanna, I haven't seen you forever on here. Maybe just because I don't watch the comments as much. Tara does a good job of getting me back to center to a degree. <laughs> uh, Pat, if we are living on a dime, is there a fertilizer alternative? Yes. I mean, you can get it on clearance right now at the end of the season. You can shop estate sales, thrift stores. My local thrift store has fertilizer all the time. Uh, like my most recent fertilizer purchase was 25 cents for it. Um, you can use compost and make compost tea. Compost tea is just putting all your green stuff in there, letting it sit in the sun to get going and it will smell bad, really bad. Let that go for however long you can a week, two weeks, however long. And it kind of depends on where you live. Like down south, it'll compost quicker than up north, okay? Because it's colder. So it just kind of depends on your temperature and your weather. Um, and then you could use compost tea to uh, water your plants also. Margaret says she loves me. I'm so real. And I tell it like it is. You know, that's the problem with our society. I am not trying to be rude. I'm not trying to be mean. None of that. I'm trying to give you a wake up call because so many people are so concerned about hurting everybody's feelings. I truly am not trying to hurt your feelings and I don't want to hurt your feelings and I don't mean to hurt your feelings. But some people have got to have a wake up call and realize you can't keep living the way you've been living if you're going to make it through a crisis in your life. Okay. Um, Mindy, I'm using our cream soup mix recipe right now, putting it in the cheesy rice casserole instead of store-bought version. Just one of my mini recipes from Dining on a Dime that I use all the time. 35% off right now. Thank you, Mindy. That is one of the best recipes. <laughs> That's one of the things that I miss going dairy-free, I will say. But yes. 
Bandana Grandma, she gave her five dollars dining at five daughters dining on a dime. Several of her nieces when they got married. Yes, thank you, Susie. She got on sale, and I sent her a great big box. <laughs> uh, Homefront Girl, I'm getting dining, or my niece is getting married in October, and she'll be getting dining on a dime. Great idea. Thank you, and thank you guys. We appreciate all of you who are ordering and supporting our small business. We really appreciate it. Some of the proceeds go to give away free Bibles, guys. It helps pay the bills so that on some of these shows, we can share the gospel and give away Bibles. So if you want a free Bible, livingonadime.com, click on the shop, click on free Bible. There's a code. If you cannot afford it, it's $9.50. But just use the coupon code free Bible, no spaces, if you cannot afford it. If you can't afford it, the $9.50 is the cost of the Bible, shipping, and packaging alone. We do not make any money on this. We don't make any money, okay? But some people were asking, saying they could afford it. They wanted a large print, easy to read, New Living Translation. So that's what we did. Kenneth, if people would simply listen to you, they could move a little farther along. Oh, from the oscillation unit. Yes, that is hilarious. I know. It's, you got to love it. Um, so these are New Living Translations. Please don't argue in the comments about translations of the Bibles, guys. <laughs> oh, my goodness. If people, if Christians would start arguing about petty things, can you just imagine what we would get done? <laughs> um, we do the New Living Translation because a lot of our viewers have never read the Bible before or all they have ever read is the King James Version. And we want them to understand what they're reading. If you're really, really concerned about translations, what's what do they say is the most perfectly translated or closest translated. I mean, they're all really good translations because they're using the Dead Sea Scrolls yeah, now. Well, and all New, that, American but New, American. New American Standard is probably yeah. the closest uh, literal translation. New King James is very, very close. <clears throat> and uh, English Standard is really strong too. But New Living Translation is, uh, the original one was not as great, but the new one is easy to read and also pretty accurate. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, do you have more questions? Well, I say pretty I... accurate. The reason yeah. why I say that is some translations are word for word translations and other ones are thought for thought translations. And so when they're thought for thought, like New Living Translation, they have to think what is it that they're trying to say? Like, what is it they're trying to say and express to you the kind of the meaning of it? And sometimes that's a little more subjective. So like, for yeah. instance, a literal translation would say, this food is so great, you're going to slap your mama. But <laughs> People that aren't from our culture and don't know what that means, the translation would be better if it were, this This food is absolutely amazing. Yeah. And that's kind of the difference between a literal word-for-word -word translation and a thought-for-thought -thought translation, is the thought-for-thought -thought says, well, what did they mean when they said slap your mama in Greek? <laughs> So, yeah. Uh, so somebody <clears> said <throat> diatomaceous earth is the pest for eliminating creepy crawlies. Yes, diatomaceous, diatomaceous earth is excellent organic pesticide. If you want to use that, I do use that all of the time. I guess when I said pesticide, I was including that in it because what it does is when they crawl, when the insects crawl over it, it breaks up their exoskeleton. And I know in one of my videos, I said something about they eat it or so. I just misspoke. I've been using diatomaceous earth for years. So I do know, but guys, you have to realize when we're doing these shows, Sometimes it's hard to keep on top of yourself because you're, you've are you got so many things going through your head uh, dealing with this. What are your best tips for stretching meat? I do soups, casseroles, breadcrumbs with ground beef. And don't waste food. If you have leftovers that are going to expire and you need to eat them for breakfast and you're not going to have your eggs and toast or whatever, you're going to have to eat them for breakfast. If you made too much soup or stew and you can't freeze it, you may be eating that for five or six meals. The number one thing that I would say for Americans is stop wasting food. That's the number one thing, really. Actually, I think I heard that 30% of fresh produce is wasted. Yeah. Uh, I mean, just so thrown in the trash when it's not bad. Yeah. So if you could think about food in general, I mean, we've, 
we almost never eat out, but when we do, um, we have date nights occasionally at our favorite taco shop. <laughs> and we've seen people come in and order a huge plate for each one of them. And they kind of barely touch it and then they leave. And it's I fine. Mean, they leave massive amounts of food. I mean, it's fine if they have the money to just let it go. But we will always get a box for whatever's left. And we always have something left, even yeah. though we share. A thing. Yeah, we share a thing of fajitas and we always have left and bring it home. And even if it's a little bit, we'll still bring it home. Yeah. Uh, Onyx Fire, what do you do if you don't own your home home? You mean to grow a garden? If you mean to grow a garden. No, for uh, when you were talking about doing this and this to pay off your house. Then you don't need to worry about paying off your house. You just. Guys, paying rent is no worse than owning a house. I know people say, oh, your house appreciates and all that. Yes, it does. But you also have a lot of maintenance and you have to pay the taxes and all this stuff on it. So I consider rent and mortgage just about equal. I mean, yeah, you could sell your house and have equity built up in, in, in it and all that, but that's not always practical and people aren't always able to buy a house. So I wouldn't be upset if you are renting. Um, you know, you just need to do what, what you can. So uh, Becky, is, is the NLT Bible easier to read than the NIV? I would say it's about the same. NLT might be slightly easier, but they're very, yeah, they're very similar, similar in terms of yeah. the readability. They're both the thought for thought translations. Yeah. Uh, Lauren, don't use deer poop as compost. They may be contaminated with prion disease. Yeah, I wouldn't use deer, deer poop or bear or raccoon or anything like that. I wouldn't use any of those. Uh, Janice, in our mountain community, it's important that we don't drink the faucet water. And the Brita filter we once had started getting a charcoal taste. It made us sick. We need our bottled water. That In that situation, that's fine. I have no problem with that. But I was thinking about the 0.002% of the American population that actually can't drink their water versus the 50% of the American population that buys bottled water... It's not there, okay? The majority of Americans do not need to buy bottled water, period. We had one person that we knew, and she had stacks of bottled water in her garage. And I was like, wow, what are you doing with all that bottled water? And she said, well, it was on sale, and my husband just refuses to drink the water. Well, stop being a persnickety about it. You know, mom leaves her water sitting out so that the chlorine evaporates so you don't have the chlorine taste. She puts it in the refrigerator so that it's nice and icy cold. Then it tastes good and you can just use regular uh, tap water. Jonathan's on. So, Jonathan, hello. How are you, our alligator friend down south? Keeps trying to... <laughs> I keep having all these friends in Florida wanting me to move down there, but there's a problem. They have alligators. Uh, I sent you another thing of questions, but Karen, but before that, I haven't put it in there yet, but Karen said, <clears throat> off topic, you said you take charcoal, what to buy and how to take. It's called activated charcoal and it comes in a powder or it comes in capsules. If you get the powder, you just stir it in a glass of water and um, drink it. it. Tastes like you're drinking charcoal, wood. Or you can take it in capsules and just follow the directions on the package it's uh, used for food poisoning or stomach bugs. Whenever we get a stomach bug going around, I pour that down everybody. The first sign of explosion happening. And it usually takes care of it within 24 hours for us. So. Um, I did send you another. Okay. Mike sent me another thing. Let's see here. Uh Let's see, Donna, I am an empty nester mom and have turned a spare room into my pantry, no basement in Texas. So when everyone is scrambling at the stores, I will shop my pantry very good. Probably next Monday show is going to be my grocery store in my basement show. We love doing that. We have been doing this for third, how long have we been married? 28 years. And I've been on my own for next month. 30 years. I've been doing this for 30 years. And I didn't even know it was a thing until I read Amy Decision's book and she said that she calls it the pantry principle. I just called it buying food so I don't have to go grocery shopping. But anyway, um, K 
Karen, watch the stockpile video and you said to put water gallons in totes. You likely saved me a lot of problems with that tips. Yay. Yes. I do put normally, it's not there now because I'm looking for some totes at some garage sales, but I do normally put all of my bottled water that I have for um, emergencies in totes so that if they happen to spring a leak, it doesn't flood everything. Um, let's see. The question, how do you start compost? Josephine wants to know. You just start taking all your kitchen scraps, your vegetable peels, your uh, all your potato peels, your carrots, your cucumbers. Um, oh my goodness. If you have like a vegetable soup, I'm sorry guys, we're having smoke here really bad and our allergies are through the roof. Oh my goodness, it's been bad. Um, and uh, you just start composting by just throwing it in a big pile. You can throw it in a bucket if you want or throw it in a pile. I have three pallets out there and I just throw all my stuff in there. I put all my leaves, all my garden clippings, all my grass clippings. We empty the lawnmower clippings into there. Uh, don't put weeds in there. Don't put weeds in your compost because if it doesn't get hot enough to kill the weed seeds, <clears throat> you will have a lot of weeds in your garden. Um, yeah, so... And if you're just joining us and you're wondering about the whole Walmart discussion, that was the beginning of the show. And I, you can just go back and watch the replay. Now we're giving tips on how to save on your groceries. Yeah. yeah. But YouTube has the ability. I think you can go back even yeah. while we're still yeah. live if you want. Michelle says, I ordered my sister dining on a dime. One and two for a belated anniversary gift. Volume one, volume two. They are totally different recipes. They go together but can be used separately. And Kathy says the homemade tortillas taste better than the store-bought fresh. Oh, my goodness. The homemade tortillas are sinful. Oh, my goodness. It's a good thing I'm gluten-free because I would eat the whole thing myself with a little bit of butter and cinnamon and sugar. <gasps> Yum. We also have our gluten-free, dairy-free cookbook, guys. 35% off right now for our Labor Day sale. We had a question if we would ever do a keto-based cookbook. Unfortunately, no, because... It's not our audience. It's not our audience. But also, yeah. we asked about keto at one point, and they told us it was – Yeah. our it's, doctor didn't recommend it for us. Yes. So. We had to take our son to a kidney doctor one time, and he said that uh, it is an extremely dangerous diet for people to stay on. Uh, so we aren't going to promote that. Um, just stop eating so much food. Use a smaller plate. Stop eating so much food. I don't know one person that's been on keto that has actually stayed – um, of course that is with, you know, a lot of diets, but, uh, it seems like keto is a little bit more. Um, yeah. Uh, Jay Moore says compost tea is stinky, but easy to do. Yes. It's very stinky. And what I would do is, and we'll probably do next year is get it. I have a trash can that I got a garage sale for a dollar and I'm just going to throw all my green stuff in there, fill it up with water, put a spigot on the bottom. I'm going to set it on like a, like a end table or something, and then uh, put a spigot on the bottom, and then I can just strain it. I'll have to put a strainer on the inside, but um, just strain it and put it straight into my watering can. Um, okay, let's see. Janice, I just turned my scraps into my garden, and lo and behold, what I tossed in started growing into new veggie garden, produced zucchini, sweet potatoes, cukes, and more. No seeds, all popped up from scratch. Yeah, you'll be surprised what pops up in your garden from your compost. I mean, mom, <laughs> mom's grown all kinds of stuff in her compost. And well, and I do too, except that I, you know, I use it in my garden. So a lot of times it just looks like it came from my garden. But uh, mom doesn't garden. She just has a compost pile because she just likes composting. But um, yeah, so Karen, did you see my question about the one last planner possibly being used as a sofa leg? If so, slap my name on that baby. <laughs> okay. uh, Karen, email me, editor at livingonadime.com. I have two that the printer scratched the covers on. It's not horrid, but I can't sell them. Email them and I'll sell it to you for a discount. Um, modern JL says, I agree. I want to stop coloring and go gray, but hate how it looks when the roots start showing. You know what? Just suck it up and do it. That's what I did. I was totally afraid of what it would look like when my hair went gray. And I will admit, 
around month three to six, month three to six, it was really hard not to go ahead and color it. I just wore scarves and hats. And I honestly didn't have to do that much. For me, I pinned it up so you couldn't tell that it was as, um, so you couldn't tell it was kind of growing out. Once my bangs got grow, grown out after about three, maybe it was like month four or five, then it was much easier. Just hang on. Believe me, I am so happy that I don't have to color my hair now. It's just beautiful. I just absolutely love it. Diane, not one potato came up this year, not one. I have potatoes out there, and I'm going to go dig them up tomorrow. I don't think they've done very well. Now, on that, the deer kept eating them because they're not in my fenced-off garden. So And the raccoon, didn't it? And Did the it raccoon too? was digging in, and the and the rabbits were digging in it, too. So, yeah. <laughs> You've got the trifecta. I'm not kidding. Garden-eating critters. <laughs> I've had it all. I've had hail. I had raccoons, gar uh, deer, uh, bunnies, squirrels. What else? I don't know. We've had it all this year. Um, and it's been crazy. Okay, post your comments in. Michael, grab them. Do you have any? Uh, any? Oh, yeah, here's some. Uh, compost bucket. Do you cover the bucket or leave it open? Cover it because your neighbors will be really mad at you if you don't. Suze, I love it when you reference Amy Decisions. She'll see the one who gave me the idea to write my Dining on a Dime cookbooks. Um, in one of her cookbooks, she was asked to write a frugal cookbook and she said no because it would be too complicated to do and she didn't like cooking. And I thought, well, I can do that. <laughs> you know, sometimes you just serve as a warning for others. <laughs> Amy would be laughing if she heard you say I was that. Gonna say that. She was <laughs> two years it took me to write the book, and it was eight years before we saw our first profit from it. And it was 15 years before we could make a livable income on it of forty thousand dollars a year, and then it was 20 years before we could make a good income on it. And it was 22 years before we could make an excellent income at it. <laughs> so I don't know what's wrong with me. I should have given up years ago. Um, let's see. Oh, yeah. Oh, wait. Oh, yeah. I was just going to read that. Who is the first, who is the sensible savvy one between you two? You both sensible savvy before you met, and why did you decide to be sensible and savvy? You were not <laughs> liar, liar, liar. Liars go to hell. You're supposed to say pants on fire. <laughs> liars go to hell. So Mike was not sensible and savvy, but when we got married or met, but you were very unwilling to learn at first but came around very quickly very quickly and realized oops maybe this isn't the best idea and then now he's almost more frugal than i am on some things i was willing to learn yeah. just i didn't really want to give up the things i didn't want to give up but i knew we really needed to and that was kind of a internal fight for me yep but we also discovered though tar was amazing at not spending the money on on things we really didn't need. And I, there were things I thought we needed and we really didn't need them. And she was really good at immediately spotting that. But in those I can't days, balance a checkbook to we save had my life. checks and checkbooks mostly and not credit cards for the most part. And Tara would sometimes like uh, write a, a really big check as a really big deposit. And so <laughs> what we agreed is that she would handle all the spending and I would handle all the bookkeeping and it worked out brilliantly. Yeah. Yeah. But I have I, learned a lot about, do I really need this? Yeah. I'm awful with reconciling bank statements. It's not that I don't know how to do it. It's just that I, I am pretty sure I have like dyslexia. And so I twist things around and stuff like that. And so I was always, we never, we only had two overdrafts when we had, when my grandfather had a heart attack and we had to leave town to go because we thought he was going to die. Um, we only had two overdrafts, actually our whole marriage anyway. It wasn't a matter of overdrafts. It was just a matter of calculations. So 
Um, well, and actually what's helpful to know about that is we only had two overdrafts ever and it was because of an error, like yeah. thinking you had money that you didn't have. Mm -hmm. And so I, I recognize, well, like again, Tara let me balance the checkbook. But what I realized is in order to make sure she didn't overdraft it by accident, I always made sure we always kept money in there that she didn't know was in there. <laughs> and, and now we still do that, even though we don't have any problems staying within our budget. But nevertheless, I have a certain threshold of money that if it goes below that threshold, I consider it overdrawn in yeah. my mind but it's nowhere near overdrawn. And the reason why is if an unexpected thing happens, it won't, it won't ever cause us to, to balance anything yeah. or go over. And Oh, um, the other thing I was going to say is that two times way back when, when we did have a, it was a calculation error issue that caused us to, to do that. I, we called the bank right away and said, Hey, we're, this was a mistake. This was a complete mistake. We're really sorry. We've never done this before. Can you help us out with that? And they're like, sure, we'll just take that right off. So if, if you do that, you know, 20 times a month, they're not going to do it for you. But if you're in the habit of everything is good and clear all the time and every now and then something goes wrong, call them and ask them and they'll usually fix that for you. Or we've also had things like, uh, I think we went to, was it a funeral we went to? Mm -hmm. And yeah. we went to a funeral one time and a bill didn't get paid while we were gone. And we came back and we called, it was a credit card and we called them and said, Hey, can, do you mind? Uh, we had this death in the family and we were completely, not focused about it or whatever, could you please uh, take off the extra charges for this? And they're like, sure, you've been a great customer and haven't had any trouble with you. We'll yeah. take you right off. So if you have, if you keep your financial situation, you know, pretty clean, don't hesitate to call them and ask them if you do have an accident or a mistake like that. You know, what's funny about my garden this year. Uh, Sharon says I have cantaloupe. I have a cantaloupe for my compost. Actually, I have never, ever grown cantaloupe. And this year I thought, oh, I'm going to try. Guess what is the only vegetable or I mean, the only thing that's doing well this year? My cantaloupe. I probably have 10 or 12 cantaloupe. I can't believe it. My first year growing cantaloupe and it's just going crazy. So I hope it doesn't freeze before they ripen. Um, we'll see. Tamara, my husband wants me to badly grow up my gray hair. I think it's one of the best things I ever did. So if you're even contemplating growing out your gray hair, just do it. I know it's really hard for between months three to six, somewhere around there. But guys, there's ways that you can dye. So I saw this lady and she dyed like just this portion here and flipped it over somehow and you couldn't even tell she was dying the one portion while this section was growing out just type in um gray hair transition tips or something like that on youtube and you'll find her but there's all kinds of way and there's the spray cans of stuff you can put on until it gets grown out enough to to do it i think it's the best um I think it's one of the best things I've ever done because I just got tired of doing it. But do you feel like you're living with an old lady? No. Oh, you didn't even hesitate. Thank you. What <laughs> I was funny, that. You're welcome. What was funny is initially when she was trying to grow it out, um, she had been dying it and I think didn't something burn it. And it, it was so part of it was one color and then her natural was yeah. a different color and then and then some of it was gray and that was kind of rough. And uh, so then she kind of panicked and re it again. And then we later, done it. later then she just let it go and was, I think tied it up and did things yeah. and it, it, it's good. It was I just the, wore a scarf and that kind of thing. And honestly, actually Mike and the kids had a harder time than I did with it. With what? Me growing, when I was talking about doing it, they had a harder time with the idea of me growing it out. Cause I've been threatening it for years, but Actually, it's kind of cool because in recent years, she was really having trouble with all that uh, product or whatever, causing yeah. it to fall out and yeah. and stripping it really bad. And this is a lot better. So, yeah. Yeah. No, actually, I don't. <laughs> I guess some people are really upset about it when their hair goes gray, but it doesn't bother me at all. <laughs> I mean, just get you a cute haircut. I think that's the biggest thing don't act like you're old get you a cute haircut it's the women that just have it long and straight 
and they don't ever do anything with it, well, yeah, that's going to make you look old. Get you a cute haircut, put on makeup, wear some makeup and do yourself up and get yourself some clothes that you don't look frumpy in and make yourself look like you're not an old lady. I mean, it's okay to look your age, but you don't, well, no, you don't need to look your age. Now you don't need to go around with your boobs and your butt hanging out <laughs> like a 15 year olds are doing now, but you guys can wear tasteful clothes and put on some, you know, get yourself a new lipstick, get you a foundation that covers well. And well, yeah, a lot of women look really nice with the gray hair. Mostly it's if you just don't ever comb your hair or do anything like that is where it looks bad. Yeah. So I, I wouldn't, even though kind of the common thing that people say, I think women guilt each other with it mostly is, you know, oh, you're going to look old. I wouldn't worry about that. Yeah. <laughs> Actually, and especially since there are a lot of women, they're like 30 and their hair goes gray. And so it's not the gray that's the problem. It's what do you do with it? Yeah. Um, S wants to know, story behind the living on a dime icon. There is no story. You're like the second person that's asked me that in a week. I don't know if something's going around about the living on a dime icon or something, but it's just a lady that we found and we thought, well, it's kind of a, the hair color is half blonde and half brown. So we thought, well, it's like half mom and half me. So there's no, there's no story behind well, it. Well, the main, there is a little story, which is that we had a drawing that Tara's brother did of her and everybody was horrified by it. So then he did another drawing that was supposed to be Tara's mom, well, Jill. And um, that worked out for a while, but this was kind of more of a blend or whatever of saving money lady. <laughs> so, yeah. But I mean, was, there's no story no, as far no, no as. No big fancy yeah. story. Yeah. Yeah. That's funny. You're like the, the second person that's asked that this week. I've never had anybody ask that at all. Um, yeah. And you can get highlights or low lights to transition your hair also. Um, I did the spray can stuff for a little, for a while. And, um, then I just decided to just suck it up and do it. Stephanie so. says I'm 72 and wish my hair would go gray. Wow. Wow. Oh my goodness. Um, let's see. So I had a few here. I don't know. Did you answer okay. these? Uh, what is good for bartering? So the, Two best things for bartering is booze and cigarettes. Those are the two best things for bartering because when the fecal matter hits the oscillation unit, those are the two things that are going to be super expensive and hard to get. Now, other things would be like soap, deodorants, um, things like that will probably be something that people will want to barter for also. Um Tattooed Hands Piano, Dairy-Free Cooking. What is your favorite multipurpose cooking oil? I want to buy a big thing of oil as prices are rising all the time. I keep a little veggie oil, olive oil, and sesame oil. My favorite multipurpose, I mean, I use all of it. I use shortening. I use lard. I use, I don't really like olive oil. Olive oil is actually one of the things that I'm not supposed to eat with my food allergies. Mike loves it. Um, I like avocado oil the best for like salads and stuff like that for me personally, but I, I don't think that there's any, um, oil that is necessarily better than another. Tara's not saying you should buy cigarettes though. <laughs> well, I would, if I was using it for bartering, <laughs> why not? If it meant you could get food or get your car fixed or something. Okay. I mean, if the mechanic wants to smoke, why am I to stop him? I don't know. Um, okay. Let's see. So there's this one you talked about the other day, but I don't know if you want to. Do you guys have any backups there. for power if the grid goes down? So yes and no. We don't have any backups for the full house for the power. Our house is wired <clears> for a generator, but we don't own one. We don't have solar. But... Um, we do have ways of cooking. So like I have a rocket stove and then I have a little alcohol stove and then um, we have fire pits. We do have a wood stove, but they wanted $10,000 to install it. So it's not installed. But if there's an emergency situation, we'll just install it ourselves. 
ourselves. The other option is if um, we can't install it in the house for whatever reason, we can install it in our studio here. And then we could just move out here and live. And it's a smaller space, so it would be easier to heat and that type of thing also. Um, but we do not have any solar or generators at this time. <laughs> do you ever fight? You're both so gl giggly together. It's refreshing. Never. The question would more be, when do we not fight? <laughs> We do not work well together. <laughs> so I would say that's my biggest regret in life is we don't re we don't work well together. We don't, do we? Actually, it works really well. Well, so things work really great for us with the business. If I take the work to the library and Tar stays home alone and all the kids go to school and she's at the, she has the whole house to herself. That's how we work best. I love to get... I mean, we still get along. I mean, we still love each other yes. and everything, but we... He's not sleeping in the basement we yet. We bicker less if we're not home together on that. And it's it's partly because she just wants to be all by herself and not have anyone talk to her. I like to go talk to people. Um, we have other issues like... Uh, I, I look and think if there's a question about recipe or cooking or something i figure i need to ask her but she doesn't want me to ask her whenever i have a question and i don't blame her for that but at the same time if she has a technical problem or something she'll kind of want me to deal with it right now when i'm in the middle of something else so so we just don't work good so it works great it works best <laughs> for us if i like take my work somewhere else or we also have an office in a different part of the house and sometimes it works pretty well for me to go down there but if anyone tells you they never have any disagreements with their spouse they're probably lying. Yeah. <laughs> um, uh, Kelly just ordered volume two. Can't wait to get it. Yay. So volume two is the continuation of Dining Volume One. They're two separate books, but they can be used together or apart either way. Okay. These are just all the recipes we couldn't fit in this one. 35% off right now for everyone who's wondering. Uh, let's see. Do you like ghee? I love ghee, and that's what we use for our dairy-free butter, and I just make it out of butter. It's still way cheaper to make it out of butter than to buy it at the store. Would gasoline be good for bartering, Lori? Yeah, asking. but how much gas can people store? It would be great, but storing it would be kind of hard. I mean, I guess you if you've got a big, what, 5,000-gallon, uh, what do you call it? Uh, what are those things called? Tank. I guess if you had like a 5,000 gallon tank or something, then that if would you be... bought an abandoned oil refinery and you have those giant tanks. <laughs> I mean, yeah. gasoline would be really popular if there was, if there was that kind of a massive shortage thing, but it would yeah. be hard to keep enough of it. Yeah. So, um, uh, angel in blue says my husband wasn't on board with me stocking up on water. Then on Thursday afternoon, we lost our well. We had no running water. I'm so happy. I didn't listen to him. Yeah. Uh, that's something that I probably wouldn't listen to my husband either. I mean, if I had to hide it, I would hide it because that's ridiculous. And what was that? Stocking up on water and they lost their will. Um, but, yeah. Well, and it's funny because I haven't really had any disagreement with Tara on any of the stockpiling stuff. At the beginning when she said it, I was like, well, I'm, okay. I mean, I don't know why, but sure, go ahead. And I think that that's kind of a thing as long as people like some people say that their spouse doesn't want to let them do it. And I'm thinking, well, if we had no money and we were spending a lot of money, a lot of money doing it, that would be more of an issue for me. But I, I think that's the kind of thing where if you, if one spouse doesn't understand, then hopefully they could just say, well, okay. I mean, I guess, cause in my thinking, I didn't understand why she wanted to necessarily at first, but I was thinking, it's not like she's buying something we can't use, like, you know, Iraqi money or something like that. She's buying food that if we don't need it for an emergency, we can eat it. Yeah. Uh, I've looked into the little buddy heater. Will read the reviews anyway. Seems reasonable. Yes, actually, we are getting one of those for our house this uh, winter. Our son lives in an RV, and that's what he uses. And so he really likes that and has had good um, results with that. Uh, somebody talked about going gray when they were in their early 40s. I'm 
I actually started going gray in my 30s. So I started gray, I started dyeing my hair so I wouldn't look like I was the grandmother taking my kids to school. But now, you know, once you hit 43, 44, you know, it's time to start being gray. So the sale ends, does the sale end tomorrow? Oh, Thursday. Thursday. Oh, yeah, Thursday. Today's only Monday. Oh, yep. I forgot we're live on Monday, aren't, aren't we? Oh, do you want to mention about the live thing? Because I don't know if people might wonder why we're live on a Monday. So here's the thing. We're doing an experiment for the next month and every show, almost every show. There's one where I may um, go, I may have an opportunity to interview the Amish in our community. And if I do that, that'll probably have to be recorded. I can't imagine the Amish wanting to go live. Maybe they would. I don't know. <laughs> I could maybe ask them. they're here for boxes. <laughs> no, well, those are the Hootites, but oh, okay. I should ask her too. If she'd do an interview. Um, <clears throat> but uh, we're doing an experiment for the month of September. We are going live for almost every show. Just so you know, at 2.30 p.m. And I think we should probably move our Wednesdays to 2.30. Because we're doing much better. So we, we probably need to do that. Uh, Wanda, what do you think of using zesty pickle juice for pasta or regular salads? I think that's a great idea, and I love the flavor myself. Just so we don't confuse people, I wonder if we should keep it 4.30 this week and let the people know who are regularly showing up. Or do you yeah, think we, we can. should go ahead and change? Okay. Yeah. Or we could just come on at 2.30 and stay until 7.30. Like Actually, <laughs> Actually, I'll do a poll and see what people say. But what is ghee? Ghee is clarified butter. It's where you boil butter, simmer butter. So don't boil it, simmer it. Simmer butter, the milk fat separate, or the milk proteins separate from the milk fat. The proteins fall to the bottom of the pan. The fat is left on top, and that is a dairy-free alternative for people who can't digest milk protein like me. If you could only get one of your cookbooks, which would it be? It would be volume one, 35% off right now. Because it has the a lot of the basic yeah. stuff that sort of sets you up. Yeah, Although both, the, you could do two without one, but one has a lot of tips and things that are like the basis of a lot of things. Yeah. Um, uh, I watched three YouTube videos on making ghee and made it twice already. It's much easier than think. Oh my goodness. It's so easy to make ghee or clarified butter guys. All you do is put the butter in the pan, let it simmer for about 20 to 30 minutes until all the milk proteins fall to the bottom. If they start to turn brown, stop simmering it unless you like a nutty flavor. Um, and then just, um, skim off the, the foam on the top and then just pour the fat. You'll see it's clear and leave the proteins at the bottom and that's what you do. Florida Glitz asked if a hornworm attacked your tomatoes, will they come back? Yeah, if you have enough time, but it's already September. So if it's now, it probably won't come back unless you're living someplace. Maybe if you're in, oh my goodness, Florida, maybe I guess, but you'd have to be pretty far South now. Um, the best oh. way to store water, we just store it in old um, soda bottles or water bottles and um, Rotate it every six months. Yes, go ahead. Oh, uh, nothing there was. Oh, somebody said a lot of people have off today because it's Labor Day. Although Friday there were a lot of people on too. Yeah, we had a lot of people Friday too. Um, let's see. Jonathan, our bud in Florida, he gets a four and a half hours on a five pound propane tank with my little buddy. Well, there you go. Nice. That's good to know. Wait, four and a half hours, is that all? BJ said that they went a lot longer than that. How? He said one of those little ones would do 12 hours. Those little, is that five pounds? I don't know how much, how much are those little propane, paint, propane bottles? I don't know. No idea. Uh, they're not Mennonite. Actually, we do have an Amish community that just moved here a few years ago. Some of them just moved here last year. And then we have Hootites, which are in... Montana, just north of us, just a little bit. Um, so people want to know so what a little buddy is. It's a heat. It's an emergency heater that is propane that you can use in the house. So, yeah. Normally, you can't use propane in the house because it makes poisonous gases. But this one you can. This one is got some. It's designed in that for, for that some way. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, Let's see. Water filtration, Vicki, go back to the beginning of the show. We talked about that a lot. 
2.30 is better for me, says Micah. Um, Dave and Jack are doing really good. Ellie and Emily came up this weekend, so we got to see them. All the kids are doing really good. So, um, yep, that's our kids. They're doing good. Jack starts school. Uh, often heard that gluten-free CB is a lot, oh, cookbook is a lot like volume one. If no one is gluten-free, are the recipes a lot different? Okay, so here's, yeah, it is, because what it is, is I took our Dining on a Dime cookbook and retrofitted the recipes for gluten-free, dairy-free. So it's the same recipes, but this just uses dairy-free, gluten-free, dairy-free ingredients, okay? But some of the recipes had to be completely changed. Well, like, yeah, like the sandwich bread and that I had to totally change. And yeah. the, the uh, brownies, there were a lot more. What's in the brownies on the gluten-free? Just the gluten-free flour. They just seemed more wet. <laughs> well, it's just because the gluten-free flour is a little bit different texture than the regular flour. Yeah. Yeah. Um, but, Yeah. Um, I have bottled water from 2020. Is it still okay to drink? Probably. I don't know. Smell it. See if there's any mold or anything. Probably. But at least don't waste it. Water your plants or something with it if you don't want to. Um, go back if you want to know if Walmart's doubling the prices. We talked about that at the beginning of the show. Um, Michelle, why would you need... Oh, go ahead. Do you stack your water bottles for storing? How are you storing them? So right now I just have them in one layer on the floor in our heater room, which has a drain until I can get my totes. But I think I'm going to get totes and stack them on shelves, I think is what I'm going to do in there. So yeah. Why do you need to rotate every wa water every six months if you use a Berkey water filter? Because I have water in bottles that can be used immediately. With a Berkey, it takes about 12, 15, I can't remember, 15 hours or so to um, filter through the first time the first time and then it still takes like 10 to 12 hours to do five gallons of water so i have some water for immediate use if we need if we need to crazy cat lady 67 how good are the gluten-free hamburger buttons i haven't tried them yet but i oh, want they're to. really good they're really good i made them for them and they didn't even know the difference my favorite gluten-free flour and i used this is the flour that i used to test all of the recipes in gluten-free dairy-free is the Walmart great value in the purple bag. That's the best gluten-free flour. But I have homemade flours in here that are super close to being just about as good. So Linda's wondering, is there a use for the milk protein after making the ghee? Well, you could store, yeah, I mean, you could put it in anything like muffins or anything if you want. I would add a little bit of more nutrition, I guess. Um, but yeah. Uh, yeah, I mean, I would I would use it for something like that. So um, Karen says she feeds the milk proteins from the ghee to her dog. Yeah, you could do that. Um, Amelia had 40, oh, four one-gallon water bottles spring leaks only bought about four months ago. Is this something to expect on this size water bottle? I have not had that happen. So I think you just got a bad batch make, maybe. Well, those ones that look like milk jugs, those are designed to deteriorate in the sun um, as a litter prevention thing. So if it happened that they were old when you got them, it might be that. Yeah. Because we had, we had tried filling some milk bottles, milk jugs up with water at one point mm -hmm. and they did the same thing. Yeah. How long will seeds last? Throw them in the freezer and they'll last indefinitely. Um, mm. Yeah. If you freeze them, then they're, they're really good. Uh, how do you grow and store potatoes? Where do you get your potato seeds? I just get my potato seeds at the beginning of the year. If I have some potatoes that sprouted on their own, I'll throw those in the garden. Um, I just grow them in really loose soil. Make sure you have lots of compost. They like lots of fertilizer. Um, and just water them really well. When they start to bloom and wilt over, then the potatoes are done growing. And then you can dig them up. Stop watering them a few days before you dig them up so they'll start drying out a little bit. Do you find it harder to eat less when you have so much extra food in the house? Well done on the weight loss. No, not really. Because it's in the basement far away yeah. from where we can get to it. Yeah. Uh, how do you soften hard clumps of dried onion powder? Uh, you can just grate it 
or shave it with a knife. What else? Uh, Barbie says, I ordered three of volume one and two today. Oh, I printed your label for my two boys leaving for college. Yay! I can't wait for them to get the other cookbooks. It's so easy. And they want, don't want crazy ingredients. Yep. Beverly's asking, what does one substitute for milk? Rice milk, coconut milk, almond milk, soy milk, any of those. And those can all be homemade. And those recipes are all in here. They're all homemade and you can make them homemade for way cheaper and they can all be in there also for our gluten-free 35% off right now, guys. So a number of people heard you say who tights or whatever mm -hmm. and they were wondering what that is. So it's, um, it's another knockoff of the Amish sort of, uh, unlike the Mennonites. So you got the Amish and usually Mennonites. So what people don't understand is, Mennonite is Amish. The Amish religion is actually not a Christian religion. So people don't really realize that. So when Mennonites, when Amish realize that their religion is not what they thought they thought it was, and they realize the true way to go to heaven and they understand the gospel, um, <clears throat> Usually they leave the Amish church because the Amish church is a works based system and not saved by grace. So then the Mennonites usually leave the Amish and then they become Mennonite because it's kind of the closest thing to the Amish lifestyle. Now, the, uh, the Mennonites don't believe in war for the most part that I know of. I don't know any Mennonite who does believe in war. Um, and that's the only thing that's different from other Protestant type religions that I know of, or denominations that I know of. They are very much against war. I see nothing in the Bible that says that we're to not, I mean, we are to defend our home and, and defend people. So I see nothing that I think that that is correct. Um, and we would then agree, the, we would agree with, we would disagree with pointless war, but war to defend your country yeah. is is okay. Um, and then the Hutites, they're another, I think, branch of the Amish Mennonite thing. And they all live in a community themselves and they all pool their money and resources. And basically no one owns anything really. I mean, they own little things personally, you know, but they all work together they all cook together. They all farm together. They all build houses together. And all the money that they get goes together in a pool and they use it for everybody. And so they take care of everybody that is older and sick and that kind of thing in their community. And they, um, they, they follow the Christian in Acts, is that where it is, where all the Christians sold everything and pooled their money together, yep. is who they are. And so there's a couple of those communities up here. Um, is this just a set or an actual new kitchen? I haven't been around for a while. It is a set, but some of the pieces are working like the sink. The sink works, but it is a set. Um why are Amish not Christians? So the Amish is a works-based religion. True Christianity. If you are a true Christian, if you are a true Bible-based Christian. Um, shoot, I should have brought my Bible to read. Um, just a second. What's that verse that we were going to say that I kept? I don't know what you're going In towards. Romans the other day. Okay. True Christianity, right here. Romans 10, uh, is it nine. 9 and 10? If you confess with your mouth Jesus is Lord and believe in your heart that God raised him from the dead, you will be saved. For it is with your heart that you believe and are justified, and it is with your mouth that you confess and are saved. That is true Christianity. So any religion that adds on extra things to that is not true Christianity. So praying for the dead 
you can't do that because it says before you die, you have to confess with your mouth that Jesus is Lord. Um, Amish, they are a works-based religion. How they get to heaven is by the things they do. Okay, They help people. They live with out of this world. They're not of this world by not living with technology, which isn't really true anyway. Um, you know, they use cars. They just don't own them. They use power tools. They just don't own them. They use uh, convenient refrigerators with propane and that kind of thing. Um, and so they are a works-based religion. They are not saved by grace alone. And so most Amish, when they realize that their church is wrong in that, they are shunned, of course, and then usually they become um, Mennonites. Not always. There is actually an evangelical uh, Amish group in Libby, Montana, that does believe that you are saved by grace alone, but they just like living the Amish lifestyle. And so they move to Libby, Montana, and they are up there um, doing that. So, yeah. Does salt go bad? No, it does not. Do you make buttermilk from sour milk? I always seem not to drink the whole container. So yes, a lot of times I do the same thing. I just add vinegar or uh, lemon juice to some milk and let it sit and it sours it like buttermilk. How about baptism? Baptism in Jesus' name only. So you do not need to be baptized to be saved to go to heaven. Um, to go to heaven, all you have to do is Romans 10, 9 through 10. Confess with your mouth that Jesus is Lord and believe in your heart that God raised him from the dead. You will be saved for it is with your heart that you believe and are justified. And it is with your mouth that you confess and are saved. There's nothing about baptism there. The thief on the cross, he was not baptized. And some people will say, well, he was under old covenant law instead of new because Jesus hadn't risen from the dead yet. That is not right either because he would not have been confessing to Jesus if that was the case. Some people will say that, but that's not right. If the thief on the cross was Old Covenant, he would have been confessing and doing a burnt offering to a priest, a Jewish priest, not Jesus. So we know the thief on the cross is the New Covenant, and he does not have to be baptized. And Jesus said, today you will be with me in paradise. Jesus did not go to hell. He went straight to heaven. And he told the thief, today not in two days, not in three days. He said, today you will be with me in heaven. So that's where we are on those things. Um, what about baking powder? Do you use it and does it lose its potency? Yes, it does. And yes, I do. And yes, it does. Baking powder is one of the few things that you really can't go too far past the expiration date. And if you notice your cakes and pancakes and stuff not rising, your baking powder has probably expired and go look at the bottom of the can and it will probably be expired. So baking powder is one of the few things that you do have to use fairly close to the expiration date. Um, let's see. But as I understand it, they were never fooled by false gods as cultists. Am I wrong? Should we check on them? Are you right now talking and informing people as they do? I have no idea. What, they, what that means. I don't know what that means. Sorry, Russ, you'll have to rephrase that because that didn't really make any sense. Um, let's see what else we have here. What is the most efficient heater on the market? I don't know. You'll have to Google that. Maybe Consumer Reports has that um, Kit Kat. I don't know for sure um what that will be uh bandana grandma i have a jar of pink salt that says that it was from the mountains thousands of years ago old then showed an expiration date must have dug that salt up just in time oh my goodness that's so true isn't that funny how <laughs> guys salt never expires ever it may get like hard or, or clumpy and you can just scrape it off with a um, knife or grater or something like that um Let's see. Let's, I'm tired. So we'll hit the last of the questions here. The argument is that the thief on the cross was baptized by John the Baptist. That's not true. 
Yeah, that's yeah. not in the Bible, is that's, it? That's no. You'd have if if you believe that was true, you'd have that's to be making it up. Yeah, you're making up Bible verses. That's not in the Bible. Um. So yeah. Um. Let's see. Cornelius was not baptized before the Holy Spirit fell on him with Peter. Obviously, he was approved before baptism. I never thought about that, but yeah, you're probably right. Yeah. Um, let's see. Is it? Whoops, 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 whoops. My thing jumped. Is it wrong to ask if you are ethnically or religiously Jewish? Are you ethnic, ethnically or religiously Jewish? No. He grew up Catholic, uh, but became a Christian when you were, what, 23? Yep. So, and why did you do that? Because God called me. <laughs> so why aren't you Catholic anymore? Well, because, um, because the Bible says that you're saved by grace alone. And God took me through a long, sorry, I'm not feeling good. Um, God took me through a path of um, showing me who he was. And through that, I just I realized that it's through grace, grace alone, my faith alone. And if you re I didn't read the Bible when I was growing up. And when I, I had, when I first heard that, I wasn't sure about it. And I argued a lot with the person who told me. And I went and I listened a lot. And God kind of called me to realize it was true. But then later I read the whole Bible and realized the Bible actually says that. The Bible says grace alone. And uh, there are a lot of things that speak against, like works are great as a result of your faith, but works are not a way to be saved. So um, there are things like, uh, is it Ephesians 2.8? Mm -hmm. um, Ephesians 2, 8, 9, and 10. Thank you. Lukewarm, no more. And then uh, is... Ephesians 2 8 is um, for by grace you've been saved through faith. It's not of yourselves. It's a gift of God, not of works so that no one can boast. And then if you read uh, Galatians, I think chapter three, well, actually the whole book of Galatians is really good for this, but Galatians chapter three specifically, uh, he's talking a lot. Paul is talking a lot to the Galatians who believed that they needed to do works to stay saved or to get saved. And he was telling them that's absolutely not true. So those are Bible things if you want to go read those and see. But I realized um, actually it was prior to God calling me to other things where I I had other reasons for, I mean, my family wasn't uh, very inspiring in my life. Um, and they were abusive and I, I was a rebellious teenager and I walked away from the kind of the church that they, their church at the time anyway, but I didn't understand why I believed what I believed. But I do remember as a kid, um, having remembered that people told me Jesus died for our sins as our savior. And I remember thinking, why do we need a savior? We just have to be more good than bad. And just do good things and we'll be and we'll go to heaven and that always bothered me and when i eventually heard that the true gospel and was and then read the bible i realized the bible is just full of that so that's why and we lean we are more arminian than we don't really believe in, in calvinism um okay one last thing why why do mormons believe there are different tiers of heaven because that's what joseph smith told them so but that is not biblical um, so that's not in the Bible. Didn't Jesus baptize people? I'm not sure what the question is that was referring to, but um, so when you're baptized, when you are immersed into water after you become a Christian, um, you are giving a public testimony of your faith in Jesus Christ, knowing that you could be killed for this testimony. And that is what baptism is. It's just an outward sign showing to the world, I have decided to follow Jesus. And that's what baptism does. And you should be baptized, if at all possible. And, but the Bible doesn't make any reference to Jesus baptizing anyone. 
Well, that's what I was going to say. It was John that was baptizing John people. John baptized people. There was, uh, John did tell Jesus, I need to be baptized by you. Mm -hmm. But then Jesus told him, uh, no, it needs to be this way, basically because Jesus was following the, uh, the law. And so in order to show who he was, that that's why he showed up to be baptized by John the Baptist. Yeah. But the Bible does not record Jesus baptizing yeah. anyone. Did I say he did? No, but some, oh, that was okay. a question, though. Oh, okay. Didn't Jesus sorry. baptize? Yeah, him? no, Jesus did not baptize anyone. I'm sorry if I gave you the impression that he did. I'm So we're both really tired. And um, let me just see if there's any last questions. Some of the disciples baptized people. Yes, that's true. Um, and John, uh, John the Baptist baptized a lot of people. Mm -hmm. Yep. And he baptized them uh, to... He baptized them calling to repent of their sins and turn in faith to, to God and saying that the kingdom of heaven is near because he was announcing that Christ was there right then. Yep. Yeah. Yep. And guys, if you need a Bible, we give them for free. Livingonadime.com. Go to the shop. Click on free Bible. If you cannot afford one, please use the coupon code. Some people said they wanted to pay because they could afford it. We only charge the amount cost us $9.50 to buy the Bible and ship it. That's all we charge for. But if you can't afford it, please use the coupon free Bible. We have um, a delay in shipping the Bibles because we ran out. So I think the, oh, maybe, no, I think tomorrow or the next day we should be having them arrive. We have a pallet of them arriving. And so, um, yes, we, uh, will be happy to um, send you a free Bible. Susie, I am so happy. That is great. So Lana, uh, I'm going to answer real quick. The faith without works is dead. So a lot of people say that, and most people that say that have not read the Bible. Um, if, if, you read, if you read James, James is not talking about salvation at all. He's talking about faith. And when... Um, when he says faith without works is dead, if you read the entire uh, the book of James, he's talking about how um, we recognize that you have faith by your works. So that's not saying you have to do works to be saved. It's saying that if you're saved, you're not going to you're not going to accept Christ and um, you're not going to believe in Christ and accept him and then just be the most horrible person in the world like you're after that you will have actions that you do that show people that you are a believer so that's what that means but a lot of people are given that verse to kind of quote to people just because they don't know the bible and um that's I, that's one of those things that when i was a kid i heard a lot and when i actually read the bible i realized it wasn't true there in order for it to be true that works are that works are required for salvation, it would negate whole bunches of other parts of the Bible that say it's only faith. Mm -hmm. And that's why I was saying Ephesians 2, 8 is one, but Galatians, I like to tell people Galatians because the entire book of Galatians is all about that. And Ephesians 2, 8 is one verse. And you always want to be careful to not hear somebody say a verse and then uh, just take it by one verse. And even though Ephesians 2.8 is absolutely spot on, and it does clearly say, um, nevertheless, I like to point people to Galatians because it's a lot more detailed. So, yeah. But there are a lot of places uh, where the Bible says that, and the Bible doesn't contradict itself. It never contradicts itself. And if also, if you've heard that, the people that told you that also did not read the Bible. Glory uh, means that your belief makes you want to work for God in service to him. Yes, because you appreciate what he has done for you. And so then you do it out of love for him is why you do these works. And Luke Warm No More recommended the entire book of Ephesians, not just 2.8. Yeah. And Galatians. 2.8, yeah. yeah, Ephesians and Galatians especially. But they're very, and it's funny because a lot of those epistles that Paul um, wrote, later on were kind of explaining to the church why to various churches why they were on the wrong track with what they believed about christ yeah. and he was trying to bring them back and say you know yeah. this is how your thinking is wrong 
And for each of the different churches he wrote to, he had usually some sort of commentary about something that was going on that they were wrong about. Yeah. <laughs> and, and correcting that because it's, it's important to, to believe the truth. And that's why we like to give away the Bibles because again, one verse doesn't really say a whole lot, but if you read the, if you read a whole book of the Bible, it's really helpful. If you read the entire Bible, it's better. Yes. So, um, and Amelia, uh, do we have a Bible commentary that we recommend? So I don't know of a particular Bible commentary, but I will say the Charles, um, the Chuck Swindoll study Bible, David Jeremiah study Bible and Charles Stanley study Bibles. They all have commentaries in there that are excellent. And, um, I, we personally have the, um, Chuck Swindoll. Well, we have all three of those and we like all of them very well. And so it's a Bible that has commentaries in them from those pastors that are yeah, really good. I myself don't usually read a lot of books about the Bible. Mm -hmm. I like to just read the Bible, but there are a lot of pastors that I've listened to over the years and I've liked their commentary, but the Bible also, it talks about a group of people called the Bereans who would, uh, <clears throat> who would hear what Paul or Peter or whatever was saying, and they would look through it all, all of the scriptures to see if what they were saying was true. So uh, there were a lot of pastors that I liked to listen to who <clears throat> explained a lot of things. And then I would later go and look it up. In fact, even now, I mean, even in church, I'll be sitting there listening to the pastor. And even if I recognize what he's talking about, and I pretty much know, I still go over there and look at it again to see uh, how the context is with what he's saying. So that's really important. And so I myself am not very much into Bible commentaries, but a lot of times if I'm in a Bible study or something, one of the other guys, or maybe the leader of the group at, the, at that moment will comment about somebody's commentary. And then I'll, if it's something that seems different or doesn't seem quite right, I'll go back and look. Like earlier when somebody asked if Jesus baptized anybody, I was thinking, I don't think that's true. So I went and looked real quick just to make sure that I hadn't missed it somewhere. So, and that's really important. Yeah. Um, and the other thing is, um, oh, shoot fire. What was I going to say? Uh, let's see. You're talking about the commentaries. Oh, whoever you listen to, if you listen to a pastor online, your pastor at church, even us, go and search it yourself. Go look up the Bible verses yourself. So if you're questioning something, Google Bible verses on saved by grace alone. And I go in and I read all the Bible verses and I go look in my Bible at those in those areas. And I read the whole context. Yeah. Don't just read the verse by no. itself. Read the whole chapter that it's in or maybe the whole book that it's in. But I look up the verses and then I'll read it in. And if it's um, let's say women wearing head coverings, should women wear head coverings? So I go in and I look at all the verses on head coverings. Do I think women should do it or not? Or does the Bible think, say women should do it or not? Well, I don't know. Do I, then I go look at the Greek or the Hebrew or whichever language, you know, whichever Testament you're in. And then you can decipher what, you know, what you should do. And, you know, pray and ask for discernment and wisdom as you're reading the Bible. And God will reveal those things to you. Um as you're reading the Bible, he wants you to, to love and understand and love his word. And he will give that to you. Yeah. The Bible says that God is a rewarder of those who earnestly seek him. Yeah. And lukewarm no, no more. Thank you for posting. Acts 17 is where it talks about the very ends, verifying what they were told. Um, Carrie, I was just going to answer yours real quick. Uh, what are your thoughts of other books written by apostles that are not in the Bible? They're not in the Bible. They were not intended to be in the Bible. Um, I need to find, I think it wasn't you, was it you or a different Carrie that asked about the Bible translation book that I read? I was recommending that people, uh, if you really, if you want to know more about it, to look seriously into Bible translation, but some, uh, some of those will comment on those other things that people say are other books. Typically that's a diversion from a lot of Honestly, a lot of cults like to point to uh, books that they say are out of the Bible in order to say the Bible can't be trusted. But for the most part, uh, many of those are forgeries. They were written by somebody claiming to be somebody that they weren't. 
Uh, some of them were actually written by somebody that you can identify that that was a legitimate person, but it was deemed not to be scriptural because they were giving opinions, but it wasn't um, necessary. It, was, it wasn't thought to be by the original apostles who were with Christ. It was not thought to be actually inspired by God. So there are reasons why there are lots of writings. There are reasons why they're not in there, but there was a time where like, Lots of people wanted to be famous and they would write something and say it's the book of Judas Iscariot, for instance. Well, there is a book of Judas Iscariot, but Judas hanged himself and there would have been no time for him to write the book of Judas Iscariot. <laughs> like, so there are all kinds of things like that where you can find that there, the test shows that it's not legitimate. Yeah. Um... And, and there are some books that are uh, apocryphal that uh, some people like to consider canon in their their branch of faith, those books, um, a, a lot of them are, there's not a whole lot of them, but there's certain ones that are accepted as canon by some people, which canon means actually the Bible. Uh, but the Jewish people consider the, so those certain ones to be historically useful information, but not scripture. Yeah. So that's kind of a long way around, but I would say it, it would be best to uh, kind of learn about Bible translation and Bible history a little bit on that. And I wouldn't learn it from somebody's YouTube show. <laughs> I probably would actually get a book from a person who is, um, man, these days it's really hard to know who to trust. Um, a person who's more, like I said, a, a Bible scholar in the sense of like a, somebody who explains translations, stuff like that would be helpful. Yeah. So, uh, tattooed hands says, um, I don't know what to do about being a divorcee other than staying single. So, uh, I put a link in the description there to Mike Winger's, uh, talk on that. It's fairly long, but read it. Basically the gist of divorce and remarriage, according to the Bible is if your spouse had an affair um, if your spouse is acting as an unbeliever by being abusive and not caring for you, then divorce is okay. And well, and getting remarried, right? And getting remarried. Yes. But if Mike and I tonight are arguing after the show and I just decide I don't want to be with him anymore, <laughs> but he hasn't gone and done anything with another woman then I would be wrong and I am not allowed to be remarried according to the scripture. Neither one of us would be allowed to be remarried according to scripture. So basically the only way to be remarried after your divorce is if your spouse was abusive and um, your spouse was having a, an affair. Now, um, there's a lot of caveats to that. Like if you were a Christian before you got saved, or I mean, if you were a Christian before you got divorced or not, if you weren't a Christian, then I would say it's probably okay to get remarried, but you know, you would have to pray and see what God wants you to do with that. Cause basically once you're married, you're to stay with that person um, for the rest of your life and, or his life or her life. Um, but go watch that video. Mike Winger did an excellent job preaching on it. I watched it for some questions we had some from some viewers. So go ahead and um, watch that. It's really good. So yes, you are forgiven as your sins, but forgiven from your sins if you've been divorced. But just because you're forgiven, if you're a Christian, it doesn't mean that you have permission to go and get remarried if, if your spouse didn't have an affair or wasn't abusive to you. So I'm not sure what this is about, but I just think LML, who gives the authority to all to men to interpret the meaning of the Bible? Um, and there's more that you asked, but I, I'm not sure, but I think what you're asking is who is it that says that it's okay to read the Bible for yourself? If that's what you're saying, the, the Bible was given to us for that specific purpose so that we could hear directly from God what the word of God is. So we don't need another person to interpret it for us. 
but in order to understand it, we might need to read the we need to read the whole thing. And the, the Bible says that we should constantly be studying it and keeping the word of God on our lips and stuff like that. So God gives the authority to people to interpret the Bible for themselves. But he, I'm not saying that you can just say that it makes it means anything you want it to mean. That God gives you those revelations while you're reading it through his word so like if you have some kind of if you think you hear some message from god and it's not in the bible that it wouldn't be correct because <laughs> god never contradicts himself yeah so um i think that's what you're saying i would say a lot of people want to go to somebody else to interpret the bible for them but the whole reason that it exists is for us to be able to read it and know what god wants to tell us and that's why we give them away. Yeah. yeah. So if you don't have a Bible and want one, livingonadime.com, go to the shop, click on free Bible, and we will give you one. Use the coupon code free Bible. Joel oh. says, it's funny because many people in the Bible had more than one wife. Just because people did things in the Bible, it does not mean that God condoned it. And that's the point to show that we are saved in spite of our sin. If we give our life to Christ in spite of our sin, he has forgiven us and he will remember our sins no more. Just because David cheated on. Well, or with Bathsheba. With Bathsheba. Yeah. Um, it doesn't mean that it was right. Uh, just because Solomon had, what, a thousand wives or whatever. Doesn't mean that God or condoned that. Right. Um, In fact, Solomon paid a heavy price for that the whole rest yeah. of his life. And if you actually read those stories, you will see how people paid for their sin with those things. David's children went off on the rails, you know, and pretty much after his adultery, he really didn't have much success in life after his adultery. And so you can see how your sin, um, you have to pay the consequences for your sin, but it doesn't mean that it's right. It just means that you're forgiven. Yes. Um, LML has a follow up. I've heard people interpret the same or people interpret the same verse differently. That is very true. And there are a number of reasons that could be. It could be that one person has read and studied the Bible and has a um, has just spent a lot more time understanding it and another person hasn't. But there are things that. Well, first of all, it's always good to pray that God would help you understand the Bible as you read it because it's his word. But there are things where people, two people pray, two people really make the effort to be close to God, to try to seek him and read his word. And they still come up with like a different idea about what it means. There are some things where, um, People legitimately have like disagreements about stuff, but those things should not be major, major doctrinal issues anyway. Like the issue where it comes, where it's a problem is if one person, like everyone should agree that Jesus is God who was from before time and is forevermore and is the only, and God is God. And Jesus is God and the Father is God and the Spirit is God. Like those things are, they're clear in the Bible. There's, if you don't believe those things, then, then you don't have that God. Um, Jesus was born of a virgin. Jesus came to live a sinless life because he's God as a man and to pay the price for our sins and that we, we have to believe in him and accept him or repent um, in order to be saved. Like those things are not negotiable in scripture. And if somebody has a different view of that, then they probably haven't really read the scripture very carefully. Um, but there are a lot of things where people disagree about things that legitimately you could look at and say, I don't know, is it, I'm trying to think of one, <laughs> um, you know, should women cover their hair <laughs> or, uh, or, I hate to get into this one, but um, uh, what am I trying to think of? Uh, 
is there a rapture with a pre, what am I saying? Pre tribulation. Sorry, we have a lot of smoke here and I'm like, it's not feeling very good. But like pre tribulation versus post tribulation. I think the Bible's pretty clear on that, but I think it's legitimate that legitimate people who ask God and read the Bible might still not come to an agreement on that. That the reality is, God knows there is one way that's absolutely correct by Him. And He just calls us to pray and to. Uh, keep his word on our lips and draw closer to him. And he reveals to us things. And if those things are not, they can't contradict what he says in his word or else the, the Bible also says test the spirits, which means like if you hear something allegedly from God, but it contradicts God, then it's not from God. So um, what am I trying to go with that? So there are things that people can legitimately interpret differently. And the main thing on that is just keep, drawing nearer to God and asking him for his guidance on understanding what that is. And like I said, some people interpret it differently because they don't read the Bible. They just have other people tell them what, uh, what their doctrine should be. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Tattooed hand says, remember returning to Jesus five years after having strayed, have to remember to be patient with myself and pray through it all. Yes. Just, you know, don't get worked up about it. Just pray, read your Bible, ask God to show you. Um, someone asked about women to be submissive to their husbands, and I that was bird choice, I think. I put a link to a video for you to watch in there. But yes, wives are to be submissive to their own husbands, not the entire male population, and submissive to their husbands if their husbands are godly men. So if their husbands are abusive, no, you do not have to submit to an abusive husband. Um, but like if Mike told me, well, I think that you really need to be wearing a head covering. Well, that's not being abusive. That's his interpretation of the Bible. And if he really felt that I need to be wearing a head covering, then I would need to be wearing a head covering. Well, if you need me, if you better let me know. Um, and so, um, if they're being abusive and let's say they're asking you to do something illegal, immoral or degrading or something like that, that's not being the uh, protective, caring husband that he promised to be. And he has broken his wedding vows to you. So there's a difference between that. OK, the real deal. I'm sorry. I disagree with you. And um that verse, John 6, 66, is not saying that you're unsaved. It's saying that you were not saved to begin with. Uh, you can look at John 10 and read about um, how Jesus knows his sheep. Actually, I should go back there again. Let me go back there. Uh, there are a lot of places that say that uh, once you're saved, you will not be unsaved. Um, hold on a second. Let me get to there. I was just going to refer to it, but I think it's helpful to just actually read it. Um, the other day I got confused. Um, John 10, 27. Oh, well, 10, 25. I've already told you and you do not believe in me. The proof is the work I do in my father's name, but you don't believe in me because you are not my sheep. Verse 27, my sheep listen to my voice. I know them and they follow me. I give them eternal life and they will never perish. No one can snatch them away from me for my father has given them to me and he is more powerful than anyone else. No one can snatch them from the father's hand. The father and I are one. He's saying that he, I, I know them and they follow me. And he says, I give them eternal life and they will never perish. So once he's given that to you, you cannot perish. Um, there are a lot of places, a lot of other verses that say that, but essentially there are other verses that talk about people walking away. And uh, one of the verses says uh, they went out from us because they were not of us. And so what that's saying is they were never actually saved. They never actually believed. So that's kind of what that's about. So you, once you are saved, you are saved. If you are not saved, you were never saved. So... Um, so, uh, somebody said, what do we think of the pre tierist I had never heard it put that way, preterist. but preterist, the one, the definition is one who holds that the prophecies in the Bible about the end times have already been fulfilled. 
No, they all have not been fulfilled yet. Some have been fulfilled. Well, yeah, a lot have been fulfilled, but not all of them. I mean, yeah, not not everything has been fulfilled yet. I mean, we're talking the Ezekiel War. We're talking, you know, Mark of the Beast and all that kind of stuff. Those are all prophecies that haven't been fulfilled yet. Uh, <laughs> LML, the Trinity, the word Trinity is not in the Bible, but the word salvation is not in the Bible. There are a lot of, well, there, no, sorry, it is. Um, the word salvation is in the Bible. There are a lot of words that are not in the Bible that we believe. Oh, I'm sharper usually. Well, like the rapture isn't in the Bible, but the word. But but because the word is there doesn't mean that it's not. That, that the concept, the, that the concept there. is not there. Like the Bible says, God, the father is 100% God all the time. God, the son is 100% God all the time. And God, the, the Holy Spirit is 100% God all the time. And that there is only one God and there will only ever be one God. And that, that's the concept that people have used the word Trinity to describe, that God is one being, but that somehow there are three persons. Um, and I always, it's, it's hard to explain that concept, I think, because we're limited by the fact that we're not, we're, we're bound by space and time in this place where he put us. And he is infinite way beyond us. So like, I always think if my geeky science fiction brain has always thought if you had a drawing. I love your geeky science fiction brain. Thank you. I just don't like to watch it with you. That's why we had sons. <laughs> I see. Um, my geeky science fiction brain likes to say, or it likes to think, you know, if you had a, an actual living person who was a two-dimensional person on a piece of paper, that two-dimensional person can't understand what a three-dimensional world is like. And the reason why we have trouble explaining some of those things about God is he is beyond us. That's one reason why uh, the Bible talks about not making images of God and stuff, because we can't really appreciate how magnificent he is. And so, so those concepts are in there. They're just not called that. You are right. Purgatory is not in the Bible. Um, and I think that you said, but Catholics believe it. And I think that's because, well, I'm not really sure what the reasoning was, but I know that there, um, the basis that is used sometimes is something in one of the apocryphal books that I can't remember what it is, but yeah. so there are concepts that are in the Bible and they don't necessarily have the word that we use to describe it. So I think Trinity is, is something that um, I was reading about it the other day, but historically when they came up with the word, um, it was to describe a relationship w with God <laughs> where the first the early believers believed it, but they didn't really describe what it meant. And this person was just using that word to kind of describe what it is. Kelly, before you go, have you commented on the backdrop on the address last week? That was eerie. I have no idea what she was talking about. What are you talking about? I, I'm not sure what that means. So if you want to clarify real quick. Um, let's see. Uh, Fox Nation, I started watching two-part movie on Revelation. Anyone watch it? Any thoughts? I would not watch movies like that. Honestly, I don't think you should be watching The Chosen, you know, The Ten Commandments. That's probably not Bible-based. There's one on Noah's Ark that's probably not. The thing is, if you watch something like that, you need to read it in the Bible for yourself to know what the Bible says and see what the Bible says it actually is if you're going to watch something like that. And so I honestly would not. I would... Um, well, and I'm not sure besides, I, I think the Bible is definitely the source you should always go to. And I know movies can seem interesting, but especially movies that I don't really know what the basis is for Fox Nation, but a lot of people make movies that don't necessarily, um, I've seen a lot of movies in the past on like History Channel or something where they're they're kind of coming at it with a certain perspective that's not necessarily, um, they don't know the Bible, but they're commenting on the Bible. <laughs> so 
I, I think it was, it's best to just read the Bible and pray that God would give you clarity to understand it. Yeah. And I, th I think it's, you know, it's basically kind of like idolatry when you're watching movies and stuff like that. I watched a really good video on that. And I, I think that's the true, uh, Kelly. Oh, Biden's address to the nation. I mean, it's just Hitler all over again. <laughs> You know, I mean, having the red background with the military standing in the back and saying things like that. That's, well, but, you know, to basically call out your political adversary and say everyone that doesn't agree with me is basically a criminal, evil person who's going to bring down the whole world and we need to all turn against them and cast them down. That's a. Um, that's a despotic kind of view of the world. Like there are people I strongly disagree with politically, but I wouldn't portray them as an evil, terrible person and kind of scapegoat a certain class of people and try to get, I mean, that's classic, that's classic fascist, um, communist dictator type stuff. Yeah, so. do we wanna answer that or do we wanna? And if you guys need a Bible, free Bibles, livingonadime.com, go to uh, the shop, click on a uh, free Bible. You can use the coupon code if you uh, can't afford one. It is um, totally free. Just use the coupon code free Bible. So did you want to address that or are you ready to go? We can probably go. Okay. Have a good night. Please visit us livingonadime.com. Thank you everyone for staying with us. Don't forget our 35% off sale right now for Labor Day, guys. Grab your cookbooks. All three of our print books are on sale, 35% off. Have a good night. We love you guys. See you Wednesday. Bye.